One day, strange gates opened all over the world, which emitted a bright blue light. The same phenomenon over the past few years has been recorded in different parts of the world. However, nothing strange happened anymore, so people began to believe that this matter was harmless. Nevertheless, the purpose of the incomprehensible object still remains unknown to all people. Scientists are looking for evidence that this phenomenon can lead to the invasion of dangerous monsters. A woman named Amanda asked her husband if she was the last box she was holding in her hands. As soon as Albert replied to his wife that it was now possible to rest, the woman looked at the young man. A young guy named Mark carried a box on his shoulders and smiled cheerfully at his superiors. Alfred asked the young man what he would do with his salary, to which Mark replied that he would spend it on his younger brother's education. The young guy took a mobile phone out of his pocket and showed a joint photo with his brother. Mark began to tell me that his brother was very tall and a jack of all trades from early childhood. Amanda froze in confusion when the young guy began to tell different stories with his brother. Mark added with a smile that today his younger brother Kyle will finish high school early. As soon as everyone got into the car, the young guy thanked Albert and Amanda for the job provided. The man pointed to the sky and said that this work appeared due to a strange matter in the sky. Mark suddenly remembered that one of these things was on the same route as his brother. The young man then asked if the strange matter in the sky had always been so orange. Everyone in the car looked in the sky at the thing that used to glow bright blue. Mark was very frightened when the car suddenly began to brake sharply on the move. Amanda anxiously asked if someone had crashed into them from behind, and Mark decided to check. As soon as the young guy got out of the car, the young man noticed a huge monster on the roof of the vehicle. The strange creature rushed at Mark, but the guy was able to dodge at the last second, and the bird crashed into the glass. The young guy asked Albert with horror what this strange, huge creature on the car was. Mark began to look around and noticed that these terrible creatures were flying out of a strange matter in the sky. Only after a while, the young man learned that the gate led to another world from which these monsters appeared. If you leave all the gates unpassed for a long time, then everything will definitely end in disaster sooner or later. When the massive underground breakthrough began, millions of people across the country were injured and tens of thousands died. Mark grabbed a stick in his hands and despite the panic and terror that seized him, rushed to save his boss. The young guy, swinging, began to desperately shout for the strange bird to leave immediately. However, Mark froze abruptly when Amanda opened the mouth of the terrible creature, preventing it from killing her husband. Alfred stared in horror at his wife's pumped-up arms as Amanda yelled at him to leave immediately. It was then that the awakened people appeared who had the power to resist monsters. These people in the future will become hunters operating in dungeons, and soon this profession will be the most important in the world. Mark's younger brother, whose name was Kyle, was standing on the bridge and corpses of strange creatures lay under his feet. People stared dumbfounded at Kyle, who in one short moment awakened the black flames in himself and defeated the terrible creature. Mark's brother, who was so loved and protected by the young man, awoke as one of the first S-rank hunters. Thus, eight years passed, and people learned to deal with strange creatures from the gates in heaven. A young girl showed the interviewer a status window that only hunters can see. Alice said that she initially thought she was in some kind of video game with good graphics. The status shows the available abilities that the beast hunter can use. Eight years ago, Alice was just unemployed, and maybe that's why her ability developed because of the environment in the house. Upon awakening, the girl created huge tree vines to help those stuck in collapsing buildings. Alice scratched her head and embarrassedly said that at that moment she did not think, but simply acted on instinct. As a result, the girl became a hunter and still goes on dungeon raids in a small guild. One of the men said that all resources from the dungeons are subject to sale, which eventually brings a good salary. Resources are brought from dungeons that have no analogs on earth, and thanks to this, hunters quickly get rich. Even better for S-rank hunters who can easily complete A-rank dungeons. Among the hunters, Kyle can be singled out, who awakened at school age and became especially famous. Kyle lost his parents early, but was able to lead the Hunters Guild, becoming the youngest head on the planet. People say that the size of the guy's personal assets is now beyond the wildest assumptions. The interviewer asked Alice if she was able to get rich, to which the girl replied that she was not since she is an E-rank hunter. Elisa added with a smile that if she continued to do this, she would be able to earn good money this way. However, at dawn, the public learned that the doctors could not save Elisa, who died in the raid. The red-haired man asked his boss why he had recruited an F-rank hunter to the team. Mark was known among people as an F-rank hunter who called himself a caregiver. 
The young man took off the black mask from his face and looked at the red-haired man, asking if he recognized him. Mark asked the disgruntled man to give him at least one chance to earn some money to survive. The boss put his hand on the red-haired guy's shoulder and asked him not to be arrogant with an F-rank hunter. However, the disgruntled man said that Mark survived raids where the rest of the team was killed. Mark froze when the red-haired man said that the guy was pathetic because even his own younger brother had abandoned him. The disgruntled man found the news on his phone that Kyle hadn't even come to Mark at the hospital when he broke his leg. The young guy in the mask could not stand it, so quickly approaching the red-haired man, he grabbed him by the collar. However, the disgruntled guy pushed Mark away from him with all his strength, saying that he did not dare to touch him. The red-haired man then walked over to the youth and lifted him off the ground, saying that the difference in strength was now clearly visible. The disgruntled man asked Mark how an F-rank could talk so boldly to a D-rank. The red-haired man let the young man go and told him to whine to his younger brother about the injustice. Mark's leg hurt very badly, but he froze when the boss sat down on one knee in front of him. Using the ability, the man said that he had patched up the body of the young man and it would be easier for him to move for a couple of hours. The boss told Mark not to let the words of such guys affect him. The masked young man smiled broadly as the man politely asked him to tone down his temper to rely on the others. Mark agreed with the boss's words, saying that he was very glad that he was taking an F-rank hunter to his party. The young guy then apologized for causing trouble for the man with these ridiculous skirmishes. The boss, a little embarrassed, replied that Mark is the only one who really appreciates and understands his role here. Looking at the man's joyful face, Mark decided with a smile that he would choose him from the entire squad. The boss approached the red-haired guy and began to scold him for bullying Mark. The masked young man put his hand out to the side and used his ability to confirm the influence. A sign flashed above the boss, telling Mark to add the man to his influence list. The boss called out to the young man, saying that the entire guild was moving to the raid, so he needed to hurry. As soon as the squad of hunters passed through the gate, the entire team immediately found themselves in a D-rank dungeon. The boss ordered the hunters not to let their guard down, as it was not known where else the monsters could come from. The red-haired guy said that during the mass breakthrough, he was terribly afraid of these creatures. The body of the prostrate creature lying on the ground disappeared, leaving behind a jewel. Hunters were pleased with the fact that, although the rank of the dungeon is low, you can collect hundreds of such stones from it. The red-haired man asked Mark if he knew that most of what he had dug up would go to the guild commission. The young guy in the mask replied in confusion that he thought that he would receive his salary from the total profit. However, the disgruntled man replied that they would divide the magic stones of the monsters among themselves. The red-haired man added that if they found out that Mark was hiding stones in his pockets, they would hang him on a pole. A young guy in a black mask was very angry that he was forced to go out of his way for a couple of kopecks. Mark plunged into a flood of memories from the past, how he lost his parents early and how his brother abandoned him after waking up. Although the young man tried to stop Kyle because it was dangerous, he did not even listen to his brother. While Mark was serving in the army, his younger brother united hunters and eventually created his own hunter guild. When Kyle's guild became the strongest in the world, the guy became a person that Mark was not allowed to approach. Mark quit his job and invested all the money in a broker who said he could wake him up. After a whole bunch of disgusting procedures, the main character woke up, but turned out to be just an F-rank. There was a rumor among people that Mark deliberately pestered various people in order to wake up and become like Kyle. The main character began to be poured with mud in the media space, and Mark turned into a scapegoat. Then Kyle asked his older brother when he would stop bringing him one trouble. The younger brother looked at Mark and wondered if the F-rank was not ashamed to call himself a tutor. Kyle approached his brother and whispered in a low voice that he hadn't raised anyone and was just wasting his time. And after Mark was injured in the dungeon and could not move his leg, his younger brother did not help him. Then Kyle said that he was glad that now the guy would stop getting into trouble in the dungeons. And the look of his younger brother told Mark that Kyle wanted the guy to stop clinging to him. The main character lowered the pickaxe to the ground with a clink and froze for a few minutes, talking about his own. Smirking, Mark agreed with the idea that he himself deserved such a fate for himself and no one was to blame for it. The guy understood that he should not have clung to his younger, successful brother like a parasite. Mark, being an F-rank, was well aware that he survived in dungeons where people died only because of his ability. Upon waking up, the main character received an ability that allows him to influence the people around him. 
One of these people is his younger brother, Kyle, whom Mark raised himself. And this group also includes acquaintances who simply responded to the friendliness of the main character. All of these people are Mark's targets. And if he tells them a code word, they will immediately be influenced by him. Thus, the main character gives his targets a small buff for pumping their characteristics. Mark was well aware that his buff did not help much in survival, but there was nothing he could do about it. The main character knew that he was not just lucky to survive in a dungeon where everyone else was dying. Suddenly, a sign flashed in front of Mark, informing him that the additional ability had been activated. The protagonist then felt that the abilities and characteristics of the object of influence were absorbed and doubled by him. Mark froze abruptly in horror when he realized that he had become stronger because of his boss's ability. The young guy couldn't believe what was happening after all. This dungeon was only D-rank. Mark possessed a hidden ability, allowing him to temporarily double and absorb the target's stats and abilities. If the target had incredible strength, then the main character was twice as powerful, and thanks to this, Mark always managed to get out. At the same time, this ability is cursed because the condition for its activation is the death of the wearer. The main character stopped abruptly when he came to a place completely covered in blood. Suddenly, Mark heard a scream and looked up to see a red-haired man in the dragon's mouth. The man was still alive and desperately shouted that it was all because of the damn F-rank that got into their team. The main character watched in horror as a huge creature ate the body of a red-haired man. Mark could not understand that like the cursed dragon of the first Pung, whom no one could defeat, ended up in a dungeon. Suddenly, a huge creature noticed the main character and quickly rushed after the young guy. At the same moment, Mark used his boss's ability, which allowed him to strengthen his legs for a while. The main character understood that he now had a double effect of the ability of the deceased boss. Noticing a small entrance to the cave, Mark decided to hide there so that the creature would not reach him. However, the main character was horrified as the dragon destroyed Mark's saving shelter with one blow of its tail. The main character understood that the dragon was about to hit him, so he decided to put his strength in his hands and block the blow. However, Mark's abilities were not enough, and the young man immediately flew away with all his strength. Overcoming the pain, the main character raised himself on his elbows and looked at his hand, which was dripping blood from his nose. Mark realized that all his skills were useless, because even with a vengeance, the guy was no match for a dragon. The boss's memories flooded into the consciousness of the main character, and Mark saw everything as if it were real. The man tried to heal the wounds of his comrade, but came to the conclusion that the wounds left by the dragon could not be healed. Mark was breathing heavily in horror that the red-haired guy desperately wanted to save his boss, but he didn't succeed. The main character was angry at the fact that now he can't even escape because of his sore legs. Mark raised his head and looked at the creature approaching him, concluding that this was the end. Suddenly, the protagonist saw an explosion near the dragon's body, causing Mark to close his eyes. The young guy was very surprised when he realized that he was now on the shoulder of his younger brother, Kyle. Mark didn't understand why the guy was there, but Kyle sternly ordered his brother to sit silently. The main character began to shout that fighting with three heads is madness, no matter how strong the hunter is. However, Kyle didn't listen to his older brother, mentally preparing to fight the huge dragon. Furrowing his brows, the young man activated his ability, and a one-armed sword appeared in his hands. At the same moment, the dragon roared in horror and pain as soon as Kyle began to strike at it. Putting his hand out to the side, the young man used his ability with black flames to summon another sword. In one brief instant, Kyle leaped onto the creature's head and drove his sword into its skull with all his might. A dumbfounded Mark watched his brother fight and marveled at Kyle's speed. The main character noticed with his own eyes how exactly hunters of one of the highest S-rank fight. The dragon released green venom from its mouth, but Kyle managed to jump to the side and did not have time to hit him. Mark warned his brother that this poison could not be cured and that the dragon could cast a curse. Kyle ran up to his older brother and covered him with his sword so that the poison did not have time to get on him. The hunter guild leader grimaced in pain as he felt a few drops burn through his cloak. The creature roared with renewed vigor as Kyle deflected its venom with his black flames. However, the toxin was able to melt the sword of the hunter guild leader, causing Kyle to curse quietly. Mark understood that his brother could not fight to the fullest because he had to protect him now. Kyle began to yell at his brother why he had climbed into the dungeon with a broken leg in the first place. The head of the Hunter's Guild added that Mark just needed to live peacefully on Earth and not jump into this hell. Without holding back his emotions, 
Kyle shouted that his brother should have found a normal job on the land a long time ago. Mark almost whispered to his younger boy if he had come to the dungeon just for that. Overcoming the pain, the main character stood up and asked if Kyle really cared so much about his reputation. Mark looked at the huge dragon and asked his brother if he was tired of babysitting him. Almost in a whisper, the protagonist asked if Kyle was tired of his brother bringing him only trouble. The head of the Hunter's Guild looked at Mark in confusion and told him to leave immediately. However, the main character did not listen to his younger brother and rushed at the dragon with his sword. Kyle was horrified to ask Mark what he was going to do at this point in time. Dropping the sword from his hands, the main character said that he was going to die so as not to cause any more problems. Mark looked Kyle in the eye and said that if he died in the dungeon, his brother would not have to have a funeral. The dragon's head rushed at the main character, and Mark shouted loudly for his brother to finally give up on his life. Out of fear and wild horror of death, the main character closed his eyes so as not to see anything. At the same moment, Kyle used his ability and rushed at the dragon to save his older brother. Suddenly, Mark heard a huge explosion, and he himself was thrown to the side by the shockwave. As soon as the main character came to his senses, the guy felt that he was being hugged by Kyle, whose body was pierced by spikes. Mark and Kyle were the closest brothers, and after the death of their parents, their bond only strengthened. At that difficult time, the brothers were next to each other because they had no one else. Looking at the body of his younger brother, Mark asked in horror why he had acted so rashly. Wheezing in pain, Kyle told his brother that the dragon hibernates every five hours, so Mark needs to hold out for another hour. With a firm goal, the head of the Hunter's Guild ordered his elder brother to hold out a little longer. The main character could not believe in the veracity of such words because Kyle did not visit him even in the hospital. The younger brother left Mark to his fate, even when he begged for help and support. Kyle smiled and handed his brother a rune, saying that this stone would help Mark get out of the dungeon. The main character replied in confusion that the younger brother himself should use this stone. The young guy froze abruptly when Kyle whispered quietly that it was useless to heal his wounds. The head of the Hunter's Guild said with a smile that he didn't think he would need this rune anymore. Suddenly, Kyle's body went limp, causing Mark to stare into the void in horror, aware of the whole situation. The protagonist felt that he had an additional ability activated for one hour. Tears continued to flow down Mark's face as a new sign appeared above his head, announcing that his abilities had been doubled. The main character noticed that a huge dragon was rapidly heading in his direction. The creature stepped on the spot where Mark was with the body of his younger brother, Kyle. However, by using the ability to move in space, the main character managed to avoid the blow. Moving to another place, Mark pressed his brother's lifeless body closer to him. The main character felt with all his gut how the power overwhelmed him from head to toe, so he summoned a sword. Mark whispered to Kyle why he had decided to protect him even now, at the cost of his own life. A huge dragon rushed towards the main character, but the guy was at the creature above his head in an instant and struck. Mark tried to reach his maximum speed because he was now twice as strong as his brother. The main character was breathing heavily and a stream of memories of his younger brother poured into his consciousness. Kyle was sitting in his spacious office when he learned that his older brother Mark was an F-rank hunter. The head of the Hunter's Guild decided to distance himself from his brother so that Kyle's enemies would not harm Mark. The main character quickly headed for the huge dragon to deliver the final blow. At the same moment, the creature roared throughout the dungeon, causing the entire space around it to shudder. The main character flew over the dragon's head and swung his staff of black flames. Mark's voice sounded in Mark's head, asking his subordinates to report all the news about his older brother. And when the main character ended up in the hospital, Kyle yelled at his employees and demanded to find everyone who pushed Mark to do this. The huge dragon roared in pain as the protagonist sliced off one of the creature's three heads. Kyle demanded that Mark be given only financial support so that his older brother would start hating him. And late in the evenings, the head of the Hunter's Guild sat on the floor, begging Mark not to go anywhere else. The main character stood over the corpse of the dragon and tried with all his might to restore his lost breath. Smiling desperately, Mark quietly asked why Kyle hadn't told him anything earlier. Tears streamed from the young guy's eyes as he whispered softly that he didn't even know how hard Kyle was trying for him. Mark was aware that once the effect of the final vengeance was over, he would die to the dragon's poisonous fumes. A sign appeared in front of the guy's face, informing about the reward received for the single murder of the creature. One of the rewards was a wishing stone that could fulfill the only wish of its owner. Mark immediately perked up and wished for Lucas to come back to life. 
but received the answer that it was impossible to bring back the dead. The main character began to get angry because the stone could not fulfill his most cherished wish. A hidden desire flashed through Mark's head that the guy wanted to become the strongest hunter in history. However, the main character almost immediately discarded this thought because he no longer believed in its significance. So Mark asked for the stone to rewind time before his younger brother died. The main character added that he wants to return to a time when he was not yet awakened. Mark knew that even if he regretted his decision later, he would not back down and would go to the end. As soon as the stone began to glow with a bright light, the main character, as if spellbound, looked at the artifact. Closing his eyes, Mark promised himself that he would not allow something like this to happen again. The main character blew himself up from the sofa and began to look around to understand where he was. Examining his hands, Mark could not believe that he had really returned to the past. Taking his phone out of his pocket, the main character made sure that he had gone back five years to the past. The young man suddenly remembered that on that day he had gone to the office to awaken the hunters. Mark remembered that he had gone to the office with a lot of money, not knowing that it was a scammer who had dragged him to his brother. Suddenly, the main character froze when he realized that his younger brother would soon enter the room. Kyle burst into the room and began to scold Mark for continuing to do things that bring him to this office. The main character looked at his younger brother, not believing that Kyle was really alive after all. At the same moment, Mark covered the distance to his brother and hugged Kyle tightly, causing the Hunter Guild leaders to be surprised. Kyle looked at his younger brother in confusion and asked in confusion why Mark was acting so strangely. However, the head of the Hunter's Guild froze in surprise when he heard his brother say that he was sorry. Pulling away from Kyle, the main character asked for forgiveness from his brother and said that he could no longer worry. The head of the Hunter's Guild impulsively hugged Mark and said that he was very glad that Mark finally understood him. The main character was a little ashamed to say all these words, but the guy immediately felt relieved. Mark was glad that he had the chance to prevent the mistakes he had made in the past. Pulling away a little, the main character looked into his brother's eyes and confessed that he loved him. As soon as Mark decided that he would forget about the Hunters, a sign appeared in front of him about the registration of Awakening. The main character smiled in confusion when he saw the tablets with the reward received from the slain dragon. Kyle walked over to the stove and told his older brother that he could rest while the food was cooked. As the head of the Hunter's Guild sliced the vegetables, Mark felt the awkwardness hanging in the room with his whole body. The main character remembered well that in the alternate past on this day, he left home when he quarreled with his brother. Mark was glad that he got along with Kyle and was surprised that his younger brother invited him to dinner. And the guy was also surprised that he woke up again with other titles that he had never had before. The main character began to understand that he received the title of Dragon Slayer after defeating the dragon. Mark began to think that it was strange that the title had not been canceled after rewinding time into the past. A letter was painted on the title, which meant the legendary and highest rank of all. As soon as Mark clicked on the title in the status window, the guy had four more abilities in addition. Resistance to poisons, curses, and fear had the highest rank, making him invulnerable to anything below the rank. And the ability of the natural enemy Raktars doubled the effectiveness of all other abilities against dragons. Mark assumed that after going back in time, he became one of the strongest hunters. In the head of the main character, a scene immediately played out as he saves his brother from a dragon that no one can cope with. Mark would then say that for a true hunter, dragon venom is just a refreshing shower. Then the younger brother would have noticed that Mark was very cool and talented and would have immediately invited him to the guild. And then the legend of a brave dragon slayer named Mark would spread throughout the world. The protagonist decided to check if he had become a higher rank than before, since the rank of titles was the highest. However, the status window showed the values of health, strength, agility, intelligence, and magic at almost minimum levels. Mark realized that he would not be able to use all the abilities given to him because the body remained the same. The main character was very upset because he was out of work again, unlike the rest. The guy noticed that his agility and intelligence had increased to E rank, but he remembered that the same thing had happened in his previous life. However, the protagonist noticed that the tutor's title had been raised to the maximum L rank. As soon as Mark clicked on the title, four more abilities for the tutor title appeared in the status window. The main character could not understand why all the abilities had a strange name. The first ability helped to increase the speed of leveling the target chosen by the passphrase and lasting three days. Mark understood that the first ability was similar to the previous ability of the educator that he had. 
The head of the Hunter's Guild turned around when he noticed that his younger brother was talking quietly to himself. The second ability allowed Kyle or other targets of the main character to level up twice as fast as the rest. As soon as Mark complimented Kyle in front of 50 people, the younger brother would immediately become one and a half times stronger. The protagonist realized that now he can make not only Kyle the greatest hunter, but also his entire guild. Mark has already imagined how he is called the tutor of his brother's guild and how the guy will begin to live happily ever after. However, the protagonist's disappointment was the fact that in order to activate the ability, he had to confess his love. The protagonist came to the conclusion that the activation phrase changed after he woke up. Mark realized that if he came up to everyone and confessed his love, then he would most likely simply be arrested for it. The main character was upset when he realized that, although the abilities are cool, they are useless with the code phrase. With the latter ability, Mark can see people's expected ranks before waking up. Kyle brought the protagonist out of his thoughts, who put a plate on the table asking if Mark would have enough food. The head of the Hunter's Guild added that he had just whipped up all the ingredients he had. As soon as Mark said that the food was delicious, Kyle smiled and told his older brother not to hesitate to ask for more. The main character was surprised that his brother was so good at cooking, but Kyle explained that he managed to learn while living alone. Mark froze when his younger brother added that he had to learn how to cook his own food because of poisons and antidotes. Kyle explained that since he had been alone for a long time and behaved boldly, they tried to put him in his place. Many guilds grew with the help of large corporations, but Kyle decided to build his own guild on his own. Mark grabbed his younger brother by the face and asked why he didn't tell him anything. Kyle quietly said that this was all the result of his actions, so the older brother did not have to worry. The head of the Hunter's Guild admitted that he was very worried about the fact that their relationship with each other had soured. Kyle explained that he just didn't want to drag his older brother in because he knew he could hurt. Grabbing Mark's hand, the head of the Hunter's Guild confidently said that he loved his brother very much. The main character was immediately embarrassed and began to put food on Kyle so that he would eat well and stop talking nonsense. However, Mark was glad that he was able to go back in time because it was one of his best decisions. Kyle looked at his phone and told his brother that he had something to do and needed to go urgently. The Hunter Guild leader then asked the eldest brother to remove the contact that was awakening the Hunter. Mark really hoped that his brother's guild hadn't knocked all the crap out of the revival organization. The protagonist waved his hand and informed Kyle that he would leave the house as soon as he washed all the dishes. However, the head of the Hunter's Guild replied with a smile that from now on, Mark would live in his house. This statement put the main character in a stupor, making him speechless for a few minutes. Then gathering his thoughts, the main character exclaimed why he could not leave the apartment. Kyle told his brother that it was too dangerous outside, so Mark should never go out. The head of the Hunter's Guild explained to his brother that now the enemies of the guild would have their eyes on Mark to put pressure on Kyle. The younger brother added that he could not let Mark go when he was now in danger, so he offered to live in the house. The main character tried to escape, saying that Kyle had completely lost his mind, but the door was locked. The head of the Hunter's Guild said that he had moved all of Mark's belongings from his previous apartment, so there was nothing there now. Kyle looked at his older brother with a smile and said that he was very glad that Mark agreed to his proposal. The protagonist froze when Kyle explained that Mark's declaration of love was akin to agreeing to all this. As soon as the head of the Hunter's Guild left the apartment, the main character stayed in it and began to just lie on the floor. Mark speculated that such strange changes in Kyle's behavior were due to time travel. Then the main character began to rummage through his backpack to take everything he needed and leave the place until the younger brother returned. However, as soon as the main character gathered all his things and opened the door, he noticed a huge man named Bernard on the threshold. Mark remembered that Bernard was one of Kyle's trusted men and possessed defensive abilities. The man was blocked by the protagonist and explained that the guildmaster had ordered him not to let Mark leave. However, the guy did not want to calm down, so Bernard grabbed him by the shoulders and said that he would not repeat it again. At the same moment, Mark felt that unique pressure from high-ranking hunters, as if the prey was chained before a predator. Suddenly, the protagonist felt the activation of the ability to resist fear. Mark felt that he was no longer shaking and noticed that now he saw a simple plush toy in Bernard's place. The main character, feeling confident, told the man that the law has the concept of personal space that cannot be violated. However, Bernard grabbed Mark by the scruff of the neck and said that he would throw him back into the room with his feet first. Suddenly, the protagonist felt that another of his abilities had been activated. 
Bernard was very surprised when the boss's older brother suddenly grabbed him by the face and pulled him to him. Mark's ability showed that a man could go from a rank to S rank, and then there would be two such people in the country. The main character realized that he could help Bernard increase his rank when he made him his object of influence. However, Mark remembered that he needed to use a passphrase to execute his plan. Barrett looked at the boy sternly and asked in a stern tone what he had just done. After waving his hand, the main character told the huge man to look at him carefully. Then the main character showed a heart with his hand because he decided that he would not be able to say the code phrase out loud. Barrett clearly did not expect to see this, so he froze speechless for a few seconds. The man threw Mark back into the apartment. The main character began to desperately think about how to change the code phrase. As soon as it was late in the evening, Mark's younger brother returned to the apartment. Immediately from the doorway, Kyle asked if Mark had a good rest, to which he immediately received a negative answer. The head of the Hunter's Guild explained that Mark needed to wait a little longer until the Hunter Guild became the strongest. However, the protagonist knew that his brother's guild would only become the strongest in three years. Kyle thought about the fact that Mark could go out with Bernard or him, but not too often. Suddenly, it dawned on the protagonist that he could use his powers to help his brother's guild. In his previous life, Mark had collected information on all the hunters, so the guy knew who would get the high rank. The protagonist decided that he needed to awaken such people and recruit them for himself to create a personal guild. Mark turned to his brother and said that he would find an A-rank hunter so that he could always protect him. The head of the Hunter Guild was very surprised to hear such words from his elder brother and looked at the guy with interest. The main character decided that he would go in search of teenagers who would become A-ranks in the future. Mark explained that if he could find A-rank bodyguards, he would be able to walk around without fear. Squinting his eyes, the head of the Hunter's Guild asked his younger brother in a serious tone if he had awakened. Kyle grabbed the guy by the shoulders and began to ask when Mark managed to wake up and what the guy's ability was now. However, the main character understood that if he told his brother about his L-rank abilities, then Kyle would ban him forever. Therefore, Mark said that he could check the rank of people as well as awaken hunters, but only once a month. The head of the hunter guild thought for a moment and replied that with such abilities, the elder brother was unlikely to be a target. Mark was very surprised when his younger brother informed him that a hunter awakening center would soon open. Kyle explained that when the center was completed, anyone would be able to wake up so there was no point in his brother's abilities. Smiling, Mark said that Kyle could now give him the freedom to find an A-rank hunter for himself. The head of the Hunter's Guild agreed and asked his brother to help him drag all the boxes from the doorstep. Mark smirked at the thought that Kyle hadn't been able to lock him up and would now create an army of A-ranks. The main character imagined how, with his abilities, he would be able to create his own guild, which would surpass Kyle's guild. The next day, Mark, accompanied by Bernard, decided to visit the hunter's registration office. On the way to the office, the main character now and then heard the surprised exclamations of girls who noticed Bernard. People whispered to each other that the hunter next to the man must be very strong. However, those present exhaled in disappointment when they heard that the young man belonged to the F-rank. Then the main character went to the store to buy more equipment for himself. The consultants immediately surrounded the young man and began to offer accessories that increased his stats. However, Mark wanted to find something nondescript, so he chose earrings to improve magic and gloves that increase health. Looking at the status window, the protagonist noticed that his stats had increased to the C rank level. Mark decided that with the remaining money he would take a contract, potions, and something else. The main character completely lost track of time, so when he went out into the street, Barad disgruntled asked where the young man went. Mark replied that he was just shopping, to which the man said that the guy should warn him in advance. The main character remembered that the ice witch Eva definitely lives somewhere nearby with a relative who runs a restaurant. Mark remembered that Eva stood out from the rest of the A-ranks and was due to wake up in two years. Therefore, the main character decided to find a girl to sign a contract with her and start the path to freedom. Walking down the street with Bernard, Mark tried in every possible way to find the restaurant where Eva worked. The man didn't understand why the brother of the head of the Hunter's Guild was looking for an establishment if the Guild had its own restaurant. The main character grinned and began to think about having a little snack on delicious pork. Suddenly, Mark froze when he noticed a blue-haired girl who was indignantly shouting that she was not guilty of anything. A man looked out of the establishment and indignantly said that the girl could not raise her voice at him. The stranger could not stand such an attitude towards herself, so spitting on everything, she decided to run away. 
The girl ran past the main character and Mark immediately realized that this was the Eve he was looking for. The main character asked Bernard to hold his hot dog for a while, which he ate, to which the man agreed. And then Mark rushed after the girl, who also ran very fast, which greatly surprised the guy. Using his new equipment, the main character realized that he could quickly catch up with Eve. The blue-haired girl turned around when she heard some strange guy calling out to her. Ava thought that it was her uncle who had sent this young man for her. So as she ran across the road, she said that she would not return. However, the blue-haired girl noticed late that a car was approaching her at high speed. Ava had already begun to say goodbye to life, but Mark arrived in time and saved the girl from a collision. The blue-haired girl looked at the guy in surprise and asked if he was okay. The main character quietly said that it would be better if he was in some cool pose now. After a while, Mark took Eva to one of the inexpensive restaurants to feed the girl and talk to her. The main character asked Eva if she would mind eating in a place similar to what her uncle manages. Taking a bite of pepper, the girl replied that the food in this restaurant was delicious and asked why Mark needed it. The young guy smiled sweetly and told the girl that a very interesting aura was emanating from her. Noticing Eva's disinterest, Mark decided to lie saying that the girl's parents helped him a lot in the past. Eva looked warily at the guy when he said that he had come to return the favor, albeit late. Taking a deep breath, the girl said that she knew a lot of people who would not have come in the boy's place at all. Mark decided to say bluntly that he had noticed an incredible talent for awakening in Eve that he could help with. The girl froze when the young guy said that he would help her awaken to a B-rank hunter. The main character added that an influential guild is behind him and he is ready to sponsor the girl. Mark smiled and asked Eva if the girl was ready to sign a contract with him and become a sought-after hunter. The main character knew that the girl would most likely agree because the profession of a hunter is very much in demand among young people. Mark decided to put on a little show, and at the same moment a parchment of paper appeared in his hand out of nowhere. This action of the guy surprised Eva very much, forcing her to get up from the table and ask where this paper came from. Mark smiled and said that the girl could do the same if she signed a contract with him. Eva began to read the contents of the contract, which spoke of joining the guild and Mark's annual guard. The protagonist explained that since he is a weak F rank, he is attacked very often. Eva ventured to ask if she could live independently of anyone if she became a hunter. Mark replied that all awakened people have a special attitude and the girl will be able to live alone. And then Eva immediately agreed. As soon as the girl took the pen in her hands, Mark immediately intercepted the girl's hand and asked her to read the contract more carefully. After the words of the young guy, Eva came to her senses and began to carefully reread the contract again. Mark began to point out some points in the contract that the girl should have paid special attention to. Then the guy added that the girl was still very young, so it was better for Eva to have a guardian with her on such occasions. The main character froze when he heard the girl's words that her guardian was exploiting her. Noticing the boy's confusion, Eva repeated that there was no point in the presence of a guardian if he was the one who used her. Suddenly, a man burst into the establishment and began to ask and shout, asking where Eva was hiding. Noticing the girl, the man indignantly asked how Eva dared to come to the establishment without asking him. Approaching the table, Eva's uncle added that the girl had no right to chill when he ordered her to work. The man roughly grabbed Eva's hand and told the girl to follow him so that he could teach her a lesson. The main character could not tolerate the man's attitude towards the girl, so he intercepted his hand, freeing Eve. Mark turned around and looked at Eva, paying attention to the clothes the girl was wearing. The main character turned to Eva with the words that now he understands well what the girl told him earlier. Mark said that he thought it was better to live without a caregiver than for someone like this man. The protagonist frowned when Eva began to say that her uncle took all of her inheritance from her parents without giving a single penny. All the people in the establishment silently watched the scene that unfolded before their eyes. The man got even angrier and growled angrily that the girl did not dare to talk to him in such a tone. Eva's uncle pushed the main character aside and told the girl that he would definitely beat all the crap out of her. However, the man and the girl froze when they heard that the guy fell to the floor with a crash. No one expected that the young guy would start swinging on the floor and shouting that the man was hitting people. With a pitiful expression on his face, Mark said that he was just trying to protect the poor girl, and the man began to wave his fists. Eva's uncle could not stand it anymore, and grabbing the young guy by the collar, rudely asked if the young man really wanted to set him up. Mark furrowed his brows and, unnoticed by everyone else, tripped the man so that he would fall too. As soon as Eva's uncle collapsed on the table with food, the main character made a surprised expression on his face. 
In an innocent voice, Mark asked the man to be careful because someone had spilled soda on the floor. Then pretending to slip as well, the protagonist whispered to the man not to dare to use Eve. Mark noticed that Eva was delighted that her uncle hit the table with a deafening sound. However, the main character understood that this sound did not come from him and realized that something was happening outside. Suddenly, Bernard ran into the establishment and loudly called out to the elder brother of the boss of the Hunter's Guild. A huge creature appeared right next to the restaurant, which began to attack civilians. People in panic began to run away when they realized that a dungeon had broken through in the vicinity. Bernard asked Mark to stay behind him so that nothing could harm the young guy. Then the man rushed to attack the creature with the words that he would deal with the problem himself. Mark couldn't understand why the dungeon had broken through now, because it hadn't happened in the past. Bernard rushed to attack the creature again, asking Kyle's brother to run away immediately. No matter how hard the man tried to strike, the creature did not hurt in any way, but only angered him more. Eva ran with her uncle as much as she could to save herself, but the girl stumbled and fell to the ground with a crash. The man looked back at his niece, but did not help the girl and ran on. Eve began to scream in terror when she realized that the huge creature was rapidly approaching her. However, Mark managed to save the girl again by using his ability and creating a shield. Grabbing the girl's hand, the main character said that Eva needed to have time to run to the evacuation shelter. Eva was very surprised by the young man's eagerness to save her, so she looked at him dumbfounded. The main character knew that if he did not get rid of the monster with one blow, then the creature could bring a lot of trouble. Mark knew that Bernard, who specializes in defense, didn't have the skills to deal AOE damage. Then the main character decided that he needed to find a way to deal with the creature by any means. Eve grabbed the guy's hand and asked him to wake her up so that she could join the battle as well. The main character explained to the girl that he wanted to wake up Eva in a safe environment so that her life would not be threatened. Finally, Mark asked the girl to go to a safe place so that the adults could do everything in their power. Then the main character ran to Bernard, thinking on how to act in this situation. The man turned around abruptly when he heard the elder brother of the head of the Hunter's Guild calling out to him. Mark asked Bernard to use his shield skill, to which the man replied that he would not be able to cover the entire city. The main character resolutely said that he had a good idea on how to save civilians from the creature. After a while, Mark and Bernard were standing on a huge wall created by a man's ability. According to the protagonist's plan, Bernard activated one of his abilities and slammed the ground with his fist. In the same gigantic creature, it was chained in a stone ball in order to limit movement in space. Bernard was a little surprised because he hadn't even thought to use his shield in this way. Mark said that it was his turn now, and after activating the ability, he covered the distance to the creature in an instant. The main character assumed that if you surround the monster with an impenetrable wall, you can create a trap for it. Mark knew that one of the items he had bought from the hunter's shop would be useful to him now. Then the young man took out a sphere of black mist poison from his pocket, which he had saved for special occasions. The main character made a swing in order to throw an object inside the barrier, in order to close it forever. However, the young guy suddenly stopped when he realized that there was no one in the stone prison. The young guy tried with all his might to figure out where the huge creature could have gone, not noticing the movement behind him. Suddenly, Mark felt that the tentacles of a huge monster were tightly enveloping his leg. At the same moment, the body of the main character soared into the air along with the body of a terrible monster. Mark realized that the creature had escaped through the sewers, which the guy had not even thought of, because there were none in the dungeons. Suddenly, the main character heard that Eva called out to him, so he paid attention to a girl who was standing with a street umbrella. The young guy was very frightened when the blue-haired girl started beating up the huge monster. At the same moment, the main character felt that the grip of the tentacles on his leg weakened, and the guy was able to get out. The young people rushed to run away, and Mark asked why Eva did not evacuate as a normal person. The girl asked the same question to Mark, but the guy reminded him that he was an awakened adult. The main character reminded Eva that the girl is still too young to participate in such battles. Eva mentally replied to herself that when Mark helped her, the girl began to feel safe. However, for herself, Eva noted that she became angry because she had to hope for outside help. Already aloud, the girl said that she wanted to become stronger in order to be able to do everything and not be afraid that no one would save her. Eva looked into Mark's eyes and said emphatically that she wanted to have the power to make choices for herself. The main character looked carefully at the girl when she reminded her that the guy himself spoke about her potential. 
The tentacles of the creature began to surround the young people from all sides, and then Eve shouted that she wanted Mark to help her. From the realization that there was nowhere else to run, the main character and the girl stopped and looked at the monster with horror. In the next moment, Mark's hand gripped Eva's tightly, and the space between the young people began to shine. The huge creature, noticing the bright glow, immediately rushed to attack the strange object for it. Bernard peeked out from behind the ruins to understand what was happening now in frozen surprise. The man noticed that the tentacles of the huge creature were covered with a thick layer of ice right in front of his eyes. The main character looked dumbfounded at Eva, who was also surprised no less than the guy. Suddenly, Eva noticed a status window that informed her that the girl's wake-up registration was complete. Bernard froze with his mouth open, and Eva began to happily tell that she had very cool abilities. The girl froze abruptly when she heard behind her that the monster had climbed out of the ice cage. As soon as the tentacles grabbed Eve, the girl unconsciously struck the creature with all its force and the monster retreated. The main character, together with Bernard, looked dumbfounded at Eva when they realized what strength the girl has. Turning her head to the side, Eva noticed a wall with a huge dent, in the center of which was a part of a huge creature. The young girl was very happy because she understood that now she could do everything herself. Approaching Bernard, Eva asked the man for a weapon, and Mark's guard immediately agreed. The young girl activated one of her abilities and turned the smell into a weapon. From the force of the girl's blow, fragments from the ice began to scatter in different directions. So Bernard covered Mark with his shield. Eva activated the ability of Hermes' boots and rushed to attack the huge monster with renewed vigor. The main character began to indignantly shout to the girl that Eva should be careful not to kill them. The blue-haired girl apologized to Mark, saying that she could not control all the power yet. The girl was so happy that Mark thought for a second that he did not know that Eva could smile like that. Suddenly, Kyle appeared in front of the main character and dealt with the monster with his black flame ability alone. Eve, who was in the air at this time, stared in surprise at the flames that were burning the monster. Among the tongues of fire, the blue-haired girl noticed the guy's frowning face that was looking directly at her. Then the hunter guild leader turned around and looked at his elder brother with an icy gaze. Grabbing Mark by the collar, Kyle began to say that he was very nervous while rushing towards him. The main character smiled and told his brother that he should not worry so much anymore because he had found a bodyguard. Mark pointed his hand at the blue-haired girl, saying that Eva was a newly minted S-class. The blue-haired girl immediately blushed when she realized that the head of the hunter's guild was standing in front of her. Spreading his arms to his sides, Mark told his brother that Eva had agreed to sign the contract. However, the main character hesitated when Kyle asked where the girl's guardian was now. The head of the Hunter's Guild looked at his brother indignantly when he said that he wanted to become Eva's patron. The girl gave the weapon to Bernard, while Kyle was indignant that Mark wanted to become a patron, not a sponsor. Noticing the misunderstanding in Eva's eyes, the man explained that the sponsor could not interfere in the Hunter's affairs. The girl immediately perked up when Bernard added that the patron was the hunter's legal guardian. Eva ran up to Mark and said that he shouldn't go that far, to which the guy replied that he couldn't leave her with his uncle. Pushing his older brother aside, Kyle said that he would not accept it, even for Mark's safety. The guildmaster explained that there were many instances of high-ranking patrons attacking low-ranking patrons. In a serious tone, Kyle asked Mark what he would do if the girl suddenly beat him. Frowning, Eva sharply replied that she was not going to harm her guardian. Kyle looked at the girl and said that it was better to become Eva's patron instead of his brother. However, the Ice Witch was not satisfied with this, so the girl immediately refused the offer. The young people began to actively argue with each other, and the main character watched them in confusion. Saying that it was time to go home, Kyle grabbed his brother, but Eva was not going to agree and grabbed Mark's hand. The girl's grip was very strong, and at the same moment, the main character felt severe pain in the shoulder area. Mark could not stand it, so he sternly asked Kyle if his older brother had raised him this way. The main character began to shout that the choice of guardian is Eva's right, so Kyle cannot resist. And then Mark added that his brother, as the head of the guild, needed to settle the situation now. Waving his hand, the main character said that his younger brother was doing his job and stopped being indignant. Kyle looked at his elder in confusion and said quietly that they would talk about it later. The main character, putting his hands on his hips and looking seriously at his departing brother, Eva began to complain loudly that this was not how she had imagined the head of the Hunter's Guild. However, Mark's anger was also directed at the girl, so the main character began to shout that Eve should not approach him. 
The Ice Witch began to say in confusion that she was very sorry, because the girl could not control her power yet. Mark picked up Eva's old sneaker from the ground and quietly said that he would help the girl put on her shoes. Tying his shoelaces, the main character said that he could not believe that his uncle had given Eva such shoes. The Ice Witch looked at the guy in surprise when Mark said that tomorrow he would buy the girl new sneakers. Eva smiled and asked the guy if this gesture made Mark's heart beat faster. The girl decided to explain herself. It often happens in dramas. And then she noticed a fly over the guy's head. Without hesitation, the Witch of Ice chased the insect away with a wave of her hand, but did not calculate the force and hit Mark in the face. At the same moment, the main character felt that scarlet blood was flowing from his nose in a stream. Blowing up from the ground, Mark said indignantly that now his heart was beating faster. However, despite the girl's blow, the main character continued his work and tied a bow on his sneaker. Mark said with a smile that he was going so far because he knew what it would be like to be in such a situation. The main character told Eva that it was hard for him when his parents died and no one could support him and his brother. The young girl looked at Mark attentively while he quietly said that he did not know how reliable a person he was. Interrupting the main character, the girl quietly muttered that in her opinion, Mark is quite reliable. The young man smiled and asked if the Ice Witch really thought so. Eva smiled broadly and, putting out her fist, asked Mark to take care of her. Without hesitation, the main character hit the girl's hand with his fist, thereby sealing his promise. Mark turned to the girl with the words that he loved the girl, although not as much as Eva's parents. The young girl looked at Mark dumbfounded, speechless for a few seconds. Eva then began to laugh out loud, and the protagonist noticed a sign stating that the keywords had influenced the target. The young people froze when Eva's uncle ran up to them and said that he was very worried about his niece. With a sly grin, the man asked if Eve was really awake. The main character realized that they still had one more problem that needed to be solved. The man began to pretend that he was very worried about Eva when he could not find her. When the young girl revealed that she had awakened to S rank, her uncle beamed, saying that they would now be super rich. Eva then added that she was going to move out of the house because she had signed a contract with Mark. The man began to be indignant that his niece was still too young to live on her own. Mark approached Eva's uncle and told her that hunters could gain independence from the age of 14. However, the man did not stop calming down, so the main character took out his phone and turned on the recording of the conversation in the restaurant. In a serious tone, Mark said that he also had the CCTV footage as evidence. Eva silently listened as the guy began to shout that the public would not argue that the man was a bad guardian. The girl became sad when her uncle began to justify himself, saying that it was he who fed and watered Eva. Then the girl's uncle grabbed Mark by the collar out of anger and began to shout that the guy had originally planned everything. Eva could no longer listen to the skirmish of the men, so she took the street area and stabbed him into the ground with all her strength. Mark explained to the girl in confusion that the awakened should not harm ordinary people. The blue-haired girl immediately made an innocent look and looked at the guy guiltily. With complete feigned voice in her voice, Eva asked her dumbfounded uncle how he could be so cruel. As soon as the man began to be indignant, the girl broke the umbrella in two parts with her hands in front of him. Eva's uncle was horrified by the girl's actions and immediately stopped arguing with his niece. In an innocent tone and with a wide smile on her face, Eva asked what exactly her uncle wanted to say. The man could not believe that he was now talking to an ordinary high school girl. Eva's uncle was well aware that his niece was more like a rabid beast now. The main character felt how his ability to resist fear was activated. Eva approached the man and said in a calm tone that her uncle was not in the right position now. The girl added that there was no male guardian because her uncle did not even buy her an umbrella. Eva came closer to the man and bending down whispered that her uncle was not worth a minute of her time. The man looked at his niece in horror when the girl told him not to touch her anymore. Putting her hands on her hips, Eva added that she would kill the man if he approached her. As soon as the young people left, Mark thought that he should behave more decently in front of the children. Thus, Eva became part of Kyle's guild and managed to avoid a life sentence. As soon as it began to dawn outside, the main character woke up from a loud knock on the door. Mark noticed that his younger brother burst into his room and was very surprised by this. Kyle walked over to his brother's bed and began to demand that the guy give him the thing he bought yesterday. The main character, confused, began to apologize for spending too much money. However, Kyle began to demand the poison dragon orb, and as soon as Mark took it out, the guildmaster took the item from his hands. The younger brother looked at the object in his hands and quietly asked if Mark did not trust him. 
The main character was very surprised when Kyle suddenly came up to him and impulsively hugged him. The head of the guild began to say that he knew that Mark had taken the orb to avoid falling into the hands of the hostages. The protagonist was speechless because he didn't even think to use the sphere in this way. Kyle pulled away from his brother and said that his older brother shouldn't do this, even if there was a hopeless situation. Smiling broadly, the younger brother added that he would always come to Mark's aid, no matter what happened. After a while, the brothers were already in the elevator, and Kyle reported that his employee had stopped by Uncle Eva's house yesterday. The head of the guild added that the man resisted with all his might, but it turned out that he illegally used Eva's inheritance. Therefore, the man had to sign a contract in exchange for the fact that the Hunter's Guild would not sue him. Kyle then said that Eva had made the decision herself that she didn't want to have anything else to do with her uncle. The head of the guild told her brother that the girl had already got used to her powers because she had spent the whole night in the training hall. Kyle added that there was nothing to worry about because the hall was made specifically for S-rank strength. The brothers froze in place as soon as they saw the ruins that remained of the old hall. Mark said quietly that he now doubted the veracity of his younger brother's words. In the middle of the room among the ruins stood Eve, who stomped her foot and used the day's eclipse ability. The main character felt a small shiver from the cold begin to pound him in the hall. Suddenly, Mark realized that he could not move, and looking at the floor, he noticed a huge shadow below him. As soon as Eve activated the ability, the protagonist felt shadows begin to creep across his body. The blue-haired girl then slammed her fist into the floor, creating a huge dent. Eva looked around when she heard that Kyle had asked his older brother to come to his senses. The main character was lying on the floor in shock and was surprised that the girl had such strength. At the same moment, Eva ran up to the young guy and asked Mark not to lose consciousness. The main character was very surprised when the girl took off her hood, thereby showing her short hair. Mark started joking that he didn't recognize Eve, making the young girl a little scared. As soon as Eva understood everything, the girl announced with a smile that the stylist from Kayla's Guild had worked on her image. And then Eva added that she was asked to keep herself in shape for future press advertisements. The girl told Mark that she had already signed all the documents for registration, so she tested her abilities to write them down. The main character decided to take a look at Eva's notes, so he asked for sheets with notes. The girl began to tell me that one of the abilities is called the Frosty Gaze. With the second ability, Eva can fly and teleport short distances. The girl added that with the help of the third ability, she can slow down and take away part of the power of opponents. Mark realized that Eve was being strengthened by absorbing the surrounding energy, so she was able to destroy the entire hall. The main character froze when the girl said that she could also absorb information from corpses. Mark was a little confused and replied to the girl that this is a rather creepy ability. Taking a ballpoint pen in his hands, the guy said that it is not necessary to indicate all abilities when registering. Eva looked at Mark in surprise when he said that he would hide a few trump cards that the girl possessed. The main character added that he would only record the girl's ability to fly, and Eva smiled softly. Grabbing the young guy by the shoulder, the girl enthusiastically said that Mark now looks like an expert. Kyle frowned and pushed Eva aside, saying that his brother found out all this when he took care of him. The girl indignantly told the head not to get in, to which Kyle replied that he just wanted to put everything in its place. The main character began to think about whether it was normal that he hid so much information about Eve. The next day, many reporters gathered in front of the main building of Kyle's Hunter's Guild. A car of the Hunter's Guild arrived and, as soon as Eva got out of the transport, the girl was surrounded by journalists. Mark, dressed in a mask and cap, peeked around the corner and quietly began to support the girl. Bernard asked the guy why he didn't just go with Eva, to which Mark replied that he didn't like crowds of people. Taking off the mask from his face, the main character said that Eva would not be sad for long because he did not go with her. Bernard looked at the guy carefully when Mark said that the girl would not notice how success and wealth would find her. The main character understood that Eva's not as cold and callous now as he knew her in the past. Now the girl radiated a happy, confident smile. Mark wondered again why there had been a breakthrough that day because there had never been anything like that in the past. The main character decided that since he is now next to the association, he must find new talents. However, the young guy immediately realized that it would be difficult for him to just find an S rank among the crowd. Mark knew that it was unlikely that the cherished high-ranking hunter would just take and pass along the street. Bernard was very surprised when the boss's older brother suddenly rushed from his seat into the crowd. The main character brushed aside the old thought and decided that since he was able to rewind time, then he could take a risk. 
Grabbing one of the guys, Mark decided that he could dig up and make the cut diamond sparkle. The young guy looked at the one who had just grabbed his arm in confusion. A status window flashed in front of the Marks, which said that the guy's name was Liam, who was an F rank. The main character began to pretend that he was glad to meet an old friend whom he had not seen for a long time. Scratching his head, Liam sincerely apologized to the young guy for not remembering him at all. Mark smiled broadly and said that Liam was understandable, since they hadn't seen each other for so long. The protagonist began to consider the guy's skills and was surprised that Liam had the ability of a gold blacksmith. From the name of the ability, it was clear that this skill was designed to create equipment. Mark knew that the people of everything would make Liam rich if he could develop his ability. By the appearance of the guy, the main character concluded that Liam's life is not sugar at all. Looking at the paper, Mark asked what the guy's results were, to which Liam replied that he was an F rank. The main character offered the guy to undergo training in the basics with him, adding that he is also an F rank. However, Liam refused, saying that he had to pay a lot of money for training, which he did not have anyway. Grabbing the guy's hand, the main character enthusiastically said that Liam could go with him to the guild. Bernard grabbed Mark by the scruff of the neck and said that only official guild members could take newcomers. Liam was very surprised when he realized that in front of him was the same Bernard from the famous Hunter's Guild. The main character smiled and proudly said that his younger brother is the head of this organization. Liam froze when Mark said that he would put in a word for him and share his equipment. The main character leaned over the guy and told Liam to accept his help due to the fact that the guy is a kind person. Mark smiled broadly and added that Liam deserved to be treated this way. However, the main character did not expect that his words would greatly move the guy and Liam would begin to cry bitterly. After a while, the young people were sitting on the bank of the river and Mark offered Liam a coffee. The guy decided to explain to the main character that he burst into tears because no one had told him such a thing for a long time. Liam decided to tell Mark that as a child, he was good at crafting things and even received awards for it. And then his parents told the guy that it was useless, and those around him kept saying that it was time to come to his senses. Liam added sadly that everything has gone downhill since then. The grades at the university were terrible, and he never got the job. The guy added that before he knew it, he was up to his ears in debt and became a miserable loser. After a few minutes of silence, the main character quietly replied that he was well aware of the guy's feelings. Mark knew that the world had changed with the awakening, and now all people began to judge each other by rank. After all, in the world, only hunters with offensive or healing abilities were honored. The main character thought for a second about what would have happened to Liam if he hadn't intervened. Mark abruptly got up from the bench and thought that now everything was different and the guy would be able to help Liam. The main character said loudly that even self-confident people have a hard time, so you can't consider yourself a loser. Mark shouted loudly that he loved himself and was not to blame for the fact that people did not see how amazing he was. Turning to the dumbfounded guy, the main character said with a smile that every person should think this to himself. Liam looked at Mark in surprise when he called him a friend and said that he loved him. The protagonist immediately noticed a sign that said that the awakened Liam had accepted the influence. However, the enthusiasm of the young guys was shattered when the head of Hunter Selection Mason gave a negative answer. The man argued his decision by the fact that he could not allow a stranger to the training program. Mason added that the program of the Hunter's Guild is unique because no one could fake it. The main character tried to persuade the man, saying that he swears that this guy is worth it. Taking off his glasses, Mason replied that he agreed that Mark had a talent for finding capable hunters. The man said that he did not understand how Mark was able to establish relations with the head in a couple of days and now demands trust. Liam felt very ashamed that Mark was now being bullied so much because of him. The main character was very surprised when suddenly Liam abruptly got up from the table and ran away with tears in his eyes. Mark followed the guy and already in the street began to call all the horrible words to Mason. As soon as the main character took out his phone and said that he would personally agree with his brother, Liam refused with a smile. The young guy said that Mark had already done enough when he said that he was not useless. The main character looked at Liam in confusion when the guy said that now he had a desire to live. Liam promised Mark that he would not spare himself and would work as hard as he could, because there was a place where F ranks were given work. A black car with tinted windows stopped in front of the young people, and Liam said that he would be picked up. Three men looked out of the car, clearly looking like bandits, and asked Liam if he wanted to pay back his debts. The guy smiled sweetly and told Mark that he would contact him when he earned more money. 
The main character looked dumbfounded at the bandits, not understanding whether it was a joke or Liam was serious. One of the bandits approached the frightened Liam and said that it was time to pay money for becoming a hunter. As soon as the men pushed the guy into the car, the main character asked the bandits who they were. The men looked menacingly at the guy and aggressively asked what he had to do with them. The main character was a little confused and said that he also wanted to go with the bandits together. After a while, Mark was already sitting in the car between Liam and the fat man, and silence reigned in the car. The main character quietly whispered to Liam that he had taken a debt from terrible people, to which the guy replied that the bank would not help him. The long-haired guy was confused when Mark said that he couldn't just leave him with the men, so he went with him. The fat bandit turned to the main character with the words that he was also awakened. Liam wanted to say something, but Mark covered his mouth with his hand and said that he was an F rank. The fat thug chuckled when the protagonist said that he was wondering what kind of office gave work to F ranks. Mark made a surprised look on his face when the bandit suggested that he go on raids with them. The bald man smirked and told Mark that since he was Liam's friend, he could go with them right away. Scratching his head, the main character cheerfully said that men are actually good guys. Mark feigned that now, thanks to men, he would finally have a normal job. However, the main character knew that the bandits offered a job as a miner, from which the guy would receive only 20%. Mark speculated that Liam could have died in a past life on such a raid without ever reaching his potential. The driver of the car cheerfully said that the main character would only have to collect everything that could bring money. Mark happily replied that if he only needed to collect various treasures, then it was easy. As soon as the protagonist asked where the main office of the guild was located, the bandits immediately told the exact address. After a while, the car arrived at the place, and the main character enthusiastically looked at the guild building. As he climbed the stairs, Mark said that although the building was a little shabby, he could feel the spirit of future success from it. As soon as the main character went up to the second floor, the guy said that there was quite good lighting here. Suddenly, Mark felt himself roughly kicked into one of the rooms with all his strength. The main character fell to the floor, and when he raised his head, he noticed that he was still in the room with other bandits. Suddenly, Mark noticed that several men began to kick Liam on the floor, and he tried with all his might to cover himself with his hands. A bald man approached the main character and cheerfully said that he was a little embarrassed that the guy accidentally got to them. Grinning, the bandit added that anyone could enter them, but not everyone would be able to leave. Liam began to cry and apologized to Mark for having to deal with his problems on his own. The men approached the main character and roughly grabbing him by the shoulder, sat him on the sofa, telling him to sign a contract immediately. The head of the guild held out the contract and said that since Mark had no debts, they would give him a favor. The man added that if the guy broke the contract, he would receive a D-rank curse. So now he had no choice. The main character turned to the head of the guild with a question that he wanted to ask him something. Mark said he wanted to compare his contract with Liam because it wouldn't be fair if they had a level playing field. All the men in the room began to laugh loudly after the words of the main character, saying that the guy was very meticulous. The guildmaster handed Mark Liam's contract and told him that he could check and even pray for it. The main character took the contract in his hands and, after carefully studying it, noticed that Liam received only 10% of the profits. Mark then tore up the paper and asked in a serious tone that men had the audacity to force Liam to sign this. The bandits looked at the guy in surprise, not understanding why he having broken the contract, did not receive a curse. The protagonist knew that his ability to resist curses would negate the effect of a D-rank curse. Getting up from the table, Mark kicked the head of the Hunter's Guild in the face with all his strength. All the bandits in the room froze at the same second and looked dumbfounded at the main character. Then Mark roughly grabbed the man by the hair and slammed his face against the wall with all his strength. As soon as the main character finished, the guy stretched his hands, rejoicing that he had bought good equipment. The bandits grabbed weapons and said that they would not leave Mark alive now and would bury him there. As soon as the main character took his phone out of his pocket, the men said that it was now too late to call the police. Mark grinned and showing the phone conversation said that he did not need to call the police because he had another trump card. Suddenly, Bernard appeared behind the protagonist who easily pushed the metal door aside. The fat bandit looked at the huge man in confusion, not understanding how he was able to find them. The bandit concluded that the huge man was just an accomplice of the impudent guy, and he would easily deal with him. So the fat man tried to block Bernard's punch as soon as he hit him. However, the main character's bodyguard was much stronger, so the bandit flew aside. As soon as the fat man fell to the floor with a crash, 
All the bandits in the room looked at him dumbfounded. Bernard turned around and told the protagonist that he had come here specifically to pick up Mark. Liam sat on the floor in confusion and quietly muttered that, as the main character, he managed to pull it off. Mark replied that when they were driving in the car, he made one call to his bodyguard. The main character knew that Bernard understood everything from the conversation, and when the bandits said aloud the exact location, he was able to find them. Suddenly, a bald man approached Mark's bodyguard from behind and, taking out a knife, angrily said that this was the end now. Liam looked at the bandit dumbfounded and exclaimed loudly that he had a bladed weapon in his hands. However, the bald man managed to damage only Bernard's snow white shirt, making the bandit very surprised. Mark's bodyguard said in a serious tone that if someone wanted to hurt him, they should take an A-class knife. At the same moment, the bald man flew to the side and the other bandits suddenly realized who was standing in front of them. Bernard looked at all the bandits and menacingly told them to kneel down at once. Mark's bodyguard approached Liam and asked if he was okay, to which the guy replied that he was more or less. Bernard turned to the main character and asked the guy what they should do next in this situation. Carefully studying the contents of the sheets of paper, Marky quietly said that they would deal with the bandits as they did. The protagonist crouched down in front of the guildmaster and told him to sign the S-Class contract immediately. The man looked at the contents of the contract and was confused when he saw that they had to pay a percentage of the profits for 50 years. Mark smiled and said that it was like a cool move where you could get rich by appropriating everything that looked valuable. The guildmaster exclaimed that he would never sign the slave contract, no matter how much the guy demanded. The man froze when the main character began to throw many sheets of paper at him one by one. The head of the guild looked at one of the sheets in surprise, and Mark said that it was in his office. The main character explained that these are contracts that the man forced F-rank hunters to sign. The man was confused when the main character asked how many hunters were alive and well now. The head of the guild began to make excuses, saying that they all went to the dungeon of their own free will, for which he was kicked in the face. Clutching the contract in his hands, Mark asked in a serious tone if the man really thought that the life of the F-ranks was worthless. The main character added that does the bandit really believe that it is possible to use hunters as consumables, paying a pittance? Liam looked at Mark in surprise as the guy said that F-rank hunters are human too. The main character sternly said that now it's time to feel in their place in order to realize everything. Mark then admitted that he really just wanted to throw the bandits into a high-ranking dungeon. The fat man tried to smile and asked for forgiveness in front of the guy, saying that they were remorseful in front of him. Mark looked at the thug seriously as he said that the 50-year contract was too cruel. The main character leaned over to the man and grabbing him by the head, said that now they would definitely be able to accept their punishment. After a while, Mark was already lying on Liam's shoulder, sitting in the car while Bernard reported to his superiors. The main character stood up and told the guy that he could no longer worry because everything was now over. Mark knew that all his efforts would be compensated tenfold when Liam awakened his powers. Noticing that the guy began to cry again, the main character began to calm Liam down again. Then the guy impulsively hugged Mark, saying that he was very grateful to him because anything could happen to him. Upon returning, the main character went to Mason and after a small scandal, knocked out a separate apartment in the dormitory. Liam was very surprised because Mark's room looked like a rich man's apartment. The main character offered the guy to become his houseworker in order to live with him in this room in peace. Noticing Liam's surprise, Mark hastened to explain that the guy wouldn't have to do his work home. Liam impulsively hugged the main character and with tears in his eyes said that Mark is a very wonderful friend. After a while, the main character still managed to calm down the sensitive Liam and put the guy to bed. Mark made the decision that he needed to go and pick up his belongings from his younger brother's house. However, as soon as the main character opened the door to leave, the guy noticed Bernard on the threshold. Mark asked in confusion if Kyle had sent the man, to which Bernard replied that that was not the case. In a serious tone, the guy's bodyguard said that this time he had come for a different reason. The main character looked at Bernard in surprise when he told the guy not to complicate anything and just follow him. As soon as the young people entered the club, the waiter immediately greeted them and asked how many people there would be. The employee of the institution froze as soon as he saw a huge man in dark glasses in front of him. Bernard lifted his glasses and asked the waiter if he knew a girl named Mira. The club employee replied in confusion that he had received a call and immediately escorted the man to a quiet place. As soon as the young people approached the table, the waiter said that he had prepared the best dishes for them. 
And then, bowing low, the young guy said that if the man needed something, he could call him. As soon as Bernard was left alone with Mark, the man said that this place was advised to him by a hunter named Mira. Bernard looked into the eyes of the main character and in a serious tone told him not to feel depressed and relax. Mark picked up a bottle of alcohol and asked the bodyguard why he had asked him to come here. Bernard snatched the bottle from the guy and began to pour Mark alcohol, saying that he wanted to apologize before it was too late. The main character was a little hurt by the man's words when he said that he initially considered Mark to be an obstacle in the way of the guild leader. And note, to the guy's surprise, Bernard smiled and said that he now considers Mark a good person. The man remembered well that when the explosion occurred, Kyle's older brother returned to help him. Bernard was surprised that Mark had managed to earn Eva's trust, as well as solve the problem with the guardsman. The man understood that the guy was still experiencing difficulties to this day, but he still helps others. Bernard said that he considered Mark to be the kind of person who could be trusted and relied on. Suddenly, the protagonist realized that he had a chance to put this time to good use and say key words to Bernard. Mark smiled sweetly and thanked his bodyguard for having a good opinion of him. Bernard turned to the main character with the words that Mark had perfectly solved the affairs with the bandits today. The guy smirked and mysteriously said that he had a case that he had investigated before. Mark then revealed that he was captured faster than he expected because Kyle was very worried about him. Bernard smiled kindly and admitted to Mark that they were in similar situations. The main character looked at the man in surprise when he said that he was also without parents, and his grandparents raised him. After Bernard grew up, he went to his ancestors on every vacation, and it was then that he woke up protecting them. The man said that Kyle helped his family a lot until his grandparents died of the disease. Bernard proudly said that the guild leader is a person who knows the importance of family. After pouring Mark some more beer, the man told the guy not to worry too much and think positively. The main character smiled and admitted that he considers Bernard to be the reliable right hand of his younger brother. Mark looked at the man in surprise when he said that he was surprised that the guy was so resistant to alcohol. The main character replied in confusion that he should not get drunk too much because he has several embarrassing habits. Bernard noted that in addition to the strange habit, Kyle's older brother eats quite a lot. After a while, Mark realized that he surprisingly did not feel intoxicated and came to the conclusion that this was due to his ability. The main character understood that he would not be able to say key words to Bernard while he was sober. The man noticed the guy's confusion, but the main character immediately explained that he was just thinking a little. The main character began to try to disable the ability to resist poisons for a while, unnoticed by Bernard. To the young man's surprise, this was not too difficult, and at the same moment in the status window, the ability disappeared. Suddenly, the main character felt his whole face turn red, sharply, and his head began to spin. Mark decided to look at Bernard, but realized that he could not focus his vision. The guy's bodyguard was very surprised when Mark fell face down on the table with a crash. The next morning, the main character woke up with a terrible pain in his head and did not immediately realize what had happened. Mark quietly began to mumble that he thought he was going to die because he didn't think his ability would turn off in this way. Suddenly, the main character froze when he heard Bernard's words that the man had brought water. Mark slowly turned his head to the side and noticed his bodyguard, who was smiling sweetly at him. Suddenly, the guy blew up from the bed when Bernard reminded him that today, the guy would receive the basic education of a hunter. Mark noticed that Bernard was listed as the target of the influence in the status window. And then the man asked if the guy didn't remember anything. The main character noticed how Bernard's face was shining with joy when the man said that the guy had a bad hangover. The only question that began to spin on Mark's mind was what really happened last night. The main character began to confuse forgiveness for his actions, which the guy did not remember at all. Bernard offered the elder brother of the head to drink juice, which is good for hangovers, and Mark agreed. Then the man began to massage the guy's legs with the words that, if you press on certain points, it will be much easier. Noticing Mark's confused look, Bernard pulled away and said that he was surprised that the guy did not remember anything. The man began to remember how after Mark collapsed on the table, the guy got up and asked to listen to him carefully. Grabbing Bernard's hand, the main character said in a drunken voice that he loved a man very much. Bernard stared dumbfounded at his boss's older brother as he said something to himself. That evening, the main character confessed to his bodyguard 30 times that he loved him. Mark was very ashamed of his actions, so the guy started asking for forgiveness and said that Bernard could kill him. The man smiled kindly and told the boss's older brother that he even liked the guy's words. Bernard began to remember how he helped the main character get up 
when his legs stopped holding him at all. The man asked Mark with a smile if this was his bad habit when he drank. Bernard remembered the times when he had helped his grandfather up in the same way while he was confessing his love for him. The elderly man then said that the grandson should not worry about others when his parents abandoned him. All the way home, while Bernard was leading the old man, the elderly man said that he loved his grandson. Therefore, when Mark's bodyguard looked at the drunk guy, he remembered his deceased grandfather. The main character asked in confusion if Bernard really sees his deceased grandfather in him. The man explained that at that moment he had a sense of calm that he had not felt for a long time. Mark was very surprised when Bernard asked if he could say hello and visit the guy sometimes. The main character wondered if this was really the effect of his ability as an ideal educator. Mark realized that when he says that he loves someone, people perceive it as a declaration of love for the people who raised them. Therefore, the protagonist came to the conclusion that this is the reason for Eva's kindness to him and the sensitivity of Liam and Kyle. Scratching his head, Mark noticed Liam peeking out the door to make sure the guy was okay. Suddenly, Eva burst into the room, saying that she had heard that Mark had moved into the dormitory in the room next to her. Noticing Liam, the girl approached the guy and, grabbing him by the scruff of the neck, told the stranger to leave Mark behind. The main character thought about the fact that his skill is able to brainwash people and follow him for no reason. Mark couldn't understand what the system was thinking when it gave him such a terrible skill. Upon opening the status window, the protagonist noticed that the poison resistance had been activated again. A few days later, Liam cooked delicious meals, making Mark and Eva very surprised. The main character said that the guy doesn't have to cook like this every day, to which Liam replied that he doesn't pay rent anyway. After tasting one of the dishes, Eva said that if she was in debt, then she should at least cook the food. Mark reminded the girl that she would soon get on television, to which Eva proudly replied that she would soon become rich. With a sly smile, the girl said that she would soon buy a house and would be able to live there with Mark without Liam. The main character replied to Eva that he really wanted the girl to make friends with both of them. Liam and Eva were surprised when Mark told them that they would be listening to training together to become hunters. Eva began to get a little angry, thereby frightening Liam, and the main character decided to urgently retreat from the room. As soon as Mark opened the door, Mason appeared on the doorstep and said that the young people had been so energetic since the morning. Handing the paper to the guy, the man said that from that day on, the three would begin training. Mark, Liam, and Eva looked at Mason in surprise, who reported that the schedule had changed. Even more, young people did not expect that their classes would begin with practice, and then there would be theory. Mason said that the students just need to deal with small monsters, and added that it is not difficult. As soon as the crowd of small creatures rushed towards the young people, Liam yelled that he didn't understand where they came from. Mark asked in confusion that this was not an ordinary basic training, where you need to cope with more than one monster. Mason replied with a smile that it was a special training so that the students could get used to the monsters. The man added that students will get used to it faster if they see different creatures more often. Without hesitation, Eva rushed forward with the words that the guy should not worry because she would cope with everything on her own. The main character looked at the girl enthusiastically and quietly said that Eva was very brave. Impaling the bodies of the creatures on the spear, Eve happily said that it would be delicious if these creatures were roasted. All this time, Mason was watching the young people intently from the observation room. A woman walked into the room and said that Eva really looked like an S-rank hunter. The woman added that this is a normal workout, but she deals with it and it can be dangerous. Mason replied that on the contrary, he was worried that the remaining two students would not be able to prove themselves in wrestling. Eve gathered all the bodies of the creatures in a pile and froze them but one creature managed to survive and crawl out. Suddenly, the creature rushed at Liam, and the guy froze in horror and began to scream loudly. Noticing the confusion and fear of the guy, the main character shouted for Liam to take the spear from the ground. The guy raised his weapon, but he was so terrified that he could not even think normally. So Liam threw down his spear and ran away, and the creature immediately rushed after him. The hysterical guy shouted loudly that he would definitely not be able to defeat the creature, and he would be killed. Suddenly, Liam heard the creature roaring right behind him and began to scream even more desperately. At the last second, the main character managed to save the guy from the jaws of a small creature. Mark told Liam in a serious tone that he shouldn't throw away his only weapon. The protagonist explained that these are F-rank monsters called toothy moles and added that they have poor eyesight. Taking a fighting stance, Mark said that it was enough for the hunters to strike by raising their spear forward 
From the observation room, everyone was carefully watching the actions of the elder brother of the head of the Hunter's Guild. Mason said in a serious tone that he was going to test how the guy would behave in such a situation. The man thought it was strange that Mark knew a lot about monsters, and the contract signed by Eva could be considered a model. Liam asked Mark in confusion if he would cope, to which the main character asked not to worry too much. Smiling softly, Liam said that Mark, unlike him, looked like a seasoned hunter. Suddenly, the protagonist realized that it would be very strange if he could catch the creature without too much trouble. As soon as the creature got closer, Mark decided that he would act like a rookie. Throwing the spear aside, the main character yelled that he was also very scared, making everyone present surprised. Mason was a little disappointed and concluded that he must have seen something wrong. As soon as the ordeal came to an end, Eva was proud of herself for showing good fighting ability. Liam began to apologize to the main character for the fact that it was his fault that Mark was bitten by the creature. Eva exclaimed enthusiastically that she thought her skills were much better than Mark's. Mason came out to the young people and praised them, saying that the students had successfully completed the basic training. The man praised Eva, saying that the girl was the best, and then added that he had no answer for the guys. Mason informed the students that theoretical training with teacher Camilla White will begin tomorrow. A young woman came out to the young people and introduced herself, saying that she hoped for good cooperation. The main character was a little confused when he realized that he actually knew Camilla from a past life. The young woman is known in scientific circles and is also a young genius, and her name becomes known all over the world. Mark addressed the woman as Dr. White, causing Camilla to be surprised and say that not many people call her that. The young woman smiled kindly at Mark and said that she thought the guy was great. The protagonist looked at Camilla in surprise when she explained that she had heard this from her Uncle Mason. Mark looked dumbfounded at the man and woman, and now he understood why they had the same last name. Camilla smiled and said that due to problems in the study, she was forced to stay in this city. Mark shook Camilla's hand and thought embarrassedly that this could be the beginning of his rosy youth. Elsewhere, Kyle asked Bernard if they had dealt with all the monsters, to which the man nodded positively. The hunters began to talk about how they were very glad that the leader did not work through the black flames. Kyle raised the paw of the dead beast, and Bernard asked the leader what they should do with the corpse of the animal. Suddenly, the men noticed the baby animal and began to think about what should be done with it. At the moment when the portal first appeared in the world, all people were surprised, as if they had seen the light for the first time. Either out of interest or out of its own fear, mankind focused its gaze on him. The portals that were left unattended eventually grew and opened, after which monsters burst out of there. Numerous portals opened at the same time, but in a situation like this, some were able to awaken and fight. Others began to invent substances and technologies on magic stones with a new source of energy in the form of themselves. People quickly adapted to the changes, and countries created hunters' associations to control the gifted. Hunters who have reached S-Class are mostly engaged in business or founding large guilds. The main character sat at a theoretical lesson and listened attentively to everything that Camilla said. Mark thought that it was only necessary to listen to a lecture for a while, and thoughts crept into his head by themselves. Camilla White began to explain that the rank of the awakened is measured based on stats and general skills. The main character understood that the young woman explained the material well, but he knew that there was one but. Camilla added that the skills of hunters can change depending on the environment. Approaching Mark, the woman said that the guy's look was similar to the look of a professor of her specialty, who was talking about a mistake. Ava, who had been drawing something on a sheet of paper until that time, looked at Mark in surprise, realizing that she had almost been caught. The main character replied to Camilla in confusion that many awakened without combat skills had recently appeared. The woman wondered when Mark added that in addition to portals, other factors affect the awakening of hunters. Noticing the serious look of the young woman, the main character asked in confusion that Camilla not pay attention. The woman grabbed the guy's hand and enthusiastically said that Mark even understood the essence of awakening skills. The main character was even more confused when the woman offered to talk after the lecture. Mark turned to Eva and pretended to remember that the girl wanted to ask Camilla something. The young girl was not at a loss and turned to the woman with the words that she was interested in how much S ranks earned. Taking a gun out of her pocket, Camilla said that the minimum income per year was $10 million. The main character was very happy that Ava managed to change the subject, and Camilla lagged behind him. The young woman began to tell me that in many countries, S ranks are rare and can be counted on the fingers of one hand. In addition to fighting monsters in difficult dungeons, 
S-Class hunters get precious items that are expensive. Camilla added that sometimes hunters manage to get even live magical animals. Mark looked at his brother in surprise when he learned that he had caught such an animal after his next descent into the dungeon. After carefully examining the flaming fur and fox's tail, Mark came to the conclusion that it was a crimson-horned lion of the second class. It is a strong beast that is not even up to all S ranks due to its high stats and powerful fire. And now in front of the heroes was a cub of such a beast which had no signs of taming. The main character asked his younger brother if there were any hunters who specialized in taming animals. Kyle said that there are such people, but they have already used all the basic techniques and even got the sign of the owner. Using the blue stone, the head of the hunter's guild ordered the cub to descend in a serious tone. The cub began to behave a little strangely, and the main character suggested that perhaps this was the effect of the stone. Suddenly, the little animal jumped aggressively from the closet and headed towards Kyle's younger brother. The head of the hunter's guild shielded his brother with his hand and ordered Mark to step aside. Putting his hand forward, Kyle used the black flames to burn the small animal. However, the cub was not affected by fire attacks and escaped from the flames without any problems. As a result, the little animal managed to scratch the head of the hunter's guild, making Mark freeze in surprise. After a while, Kyle still managed to catch the animal, which managed to scratch the man quite a bit. Throwing the cub into the room, the head of the hunter's guild said that he had forbidden it from the garden. Mark said that even with a stone, the little animal was very ferocious now. Kyle admitted that he initially did not have high hopes for the animal, so he offered Mark to get rid of it. However, the main character knew that if he tamed a baby beast, then it would be a perfect match for his younger brother. Looking at the animal, Mark was surprised when he noticed the sign and that the target was in a state of inflicting an effect. The main character was amazed at the realization that his ability works even on monsters. Mark quietly asked his brother if there were mounts in the guild, to which Kyle replied that there were, only they were all low rank. Hearing the words of the younger brother, one idea appeared in the head of the main character, and the guy smiled mysteriously. After looking Kyle straight in the eyes, the main character told his brother that he could try to raise him. Magical beasts have long existed in legends, and now they have become a reality dungeon. Initially, the monsters were supposed to be exterminated, but over time, there were cases when they were tamed. Especially magical animals are very valuable among experienced hunters as mounts. Due to the increase in size, the abilities of the beast are proportional to its difficulty, so having a mount ally is a must. The main character enthusiastically added that on top of everything else, the little animal has the ability to resist fire. Kyle looked at his older brother in surprise as the boy said that the beast was perfect for the head of the hunter's guild. Mark backed up his story with arguments that the other pet would not survive Kyle's skills. If you tame such a high-level animal with fire resistance, then Kyle will be able to increase his level. The guy's younger brother looked at the aggressive animal and asked how Mark was going to tame the monster. Kyle looked at his older brother in surprise when he said in a confident tone that he would feed the animal deliciously. The main character enthusiastically asked his younger brother if he knew what this type of monster eats. Mark froze when Kyle revealed that the animal feeds on the meat of monsters with C-class magic stones. The main character knew that one of these stones alone was worth about $8,000. Mark turned pale when he realized that even if he fed his pet once a day, it would be about $100,000 a year. Looking at how the little animal eats, the main character is convinced that the baby monster is quite cute. Mark couldn't believe that the animal would understand the code word if he said he loved him. The main character decided that he would talk about the words of love to the animal when he eats. Carefully opening the door, Mark decided that first of all, he needed to win over the baby monster to himself. The guy took out a B-class belt and the animal immediately grabbed it with its mouth and began to play. Since the main character used to work part-time in a veterinary clinic, the guy knew that all animals bow to this game. However, Mark did not calculate that the monster cub would be much stronger than himself and would begin to spin the guy in different directions. The main character heard his younger brother run into the room and asked in confusion if everything was fine. Mark told Kyle that everything was fine and offered the animal a blue stone, saying that he was now the owner of the monster. As soon as the animal sniffed the stone, his face immediately changed and was no longer as aggressive as before. Mark noticed a sign that said that the title increased the effect of the master's mark and now the object was interested in the guy. The animal began to purr loudly and spin in different directions in front of the main character, showing his kindness. Mark's younger brother said in surprise that it was the first time he had seen a little monster behave like this. 
The main character wanted to hug the animal, but Kyle stretched out his hand to the monster, telling his brother to be careful. At the same moment, the little monster aggressively bit the protagonist's younger brother on the finger. Mark grabbed the pet in his arms and began to explain that it was forbidden to bite other people, and the animal listened attentively to the guy. Kyle exhaled and said that since the animal did not aggregate on Mark, then the guy could try to raise him. The main character enthusiastically replied that he would try his best to make the little monster tame. Mark was convinced that raising monsters was much better than brainwashing ordinary people. The main character understood that if he succeeded in this matter, he would be able to raise several more monster cubs. And then Mark could become a tamer of magical beasts instead of making people his targets. The protagonist stood up and told Kyle that he would take the animal with him, but his brother asked if Mark would raise him elsewhere. The older brother told Kyle that there was plenty of room in the dormitory, even though he knew that if he stayed, his brother would ban him again. The head of the Hunter's Guild became sad when Mark added that Liam and Eve were in the dormitory. Noticing the drooping mood of his younger brother, the main character asked the guy what happened. Kyle admitted that even though they had barely reconciled, he was still sad that he didn't see his brother more often. The main character felt sorry for his brother when he said that he wanted to live with Mark as before. The main character remembered Bernard's words that Kyle values family ties very much. Mark tried to calm his brother down, saying that he was not moving at all and would definitely visit Kyle. Patting his younger brother on the back, the main character promised that as soon as he finished his training, he would spend more time with him. The head of the Hunter's Guild was very surprised when Mark suddenly offered him a drink together after practicing in the dungeon. The main character explained his proposal by the fact that Kyle is no longer small and they never managed to drink together. Mark knew that if peace reigned as before, they would surely be able to drink together in the evenings. The younger brother of the guy smiled sweetly and happily said that he was very much looking forward to tomorrow evening. The main character looked at the red-haired animal and realized that he definitely needed to come up with a name. Mark kindly said that the world must be full of love, so he will name the animal world. The next morning, many police and journalists gathered near the portal in the dungeon. Liam was very surprised and Eva indignantly asked the main character what it all meant. Pointing her finger at Kyle, the young girl asked why the guild master was going to the dungeon with them. Ignoring Eve's words, Mark's younger brother turned to the guy and asked him to take care of him. The main character looked at Kyle wearily and concluded that his brother was also very strange. Kyle told the press that he wanted to personally supervise Eva because this is the first dungeon for the new S-Class. The main character was surprised that his younger brother so skillfully manipulated public opinion. However, Mark knew that it would be the perfect combo because Ava and Kyle have two opposites. The protagonist knew that if you added Liam's equipment and Bernard's defensive skill, they would make a great team. The men told the guys that they would give them the equipment for free, so they needed to return it as soon as the raid was over. Mark picked up one of the weapons and said that this was to be expected from a high-level guild. The protagonist told Liam not to be shy and take suitable high-end equipment. Mark then asked Eva, as a member of the Hunter's Guild, to take some potion to restore. Grabbing one of the weapons, the girl asked the main character to help her with the choice. Mark began to explain to Eva that the girl is skill-oriented, so she needs to find something suitable for her height and weight. Kyle, hearing his brother's words, thought about Mason's words that Mark was very knowledgeable for a new hunter. The head of the Hunter's Guild concluded that his brother had been working hard, gathering information because he was worried about him. Kyle approached his older brother and apologized to the band for being a little late with the press. Mark knew that the gate to the dungeon would close an hour after passing through it and would not open until the boss was defeated. Kyle said that a gate stone can be used as a last resort, but it is a very rare item. The main character looking at the portal remembered how he recently defended the dungeon when he was treated like garbage. As soon as Eva called out to the guy, Mark smiled at the thought that everything was different now and he was no longer drowning in debt. The main character took a step forward with the thought in his head that that future no longer exists for him. After a while, a group of young hunters had a beautiful view of the expanses of the dungeon. Eva screamed enthusiastically, and Kyle told the girl in a serious tone to stop behaving like this and stand back. Taking out his katana, the head of the hunter's guild made a scent, using his black flames to slam the ground. The entire earth around was covered with bright flames at the same moment, illuminating the entire space around. The Ice Witch indignantly asked Kyle why he had done this and ruined the beauty of nature. Eva emotionally asked if Kyle had never heard of protecting the environment. In a calm tone, the head of the Hunter's Guild said that the first thing a girl should do was to ensure her safety. 
Looking straight into Eva's eyes, Kyle wondered if the Ice Witch hadn't even learned that in theory class. Scratching the back of her head, Eva said in confusion that she simply did not have a skill that would work on the square. Mark said that as long as the hunter kills monsters, he can level up and acquire a new skill. The main character had the opportunity to choose the optimal skill for his target of influence. Mark decided that he would choose the Dull Rain skill for Eve, which is the hallmark of the Ice Witch. A sign immediately flashed in front of the guy that Eva's height was now focused on the chosen skill. The main character turned to the girl with the words that he felt that Eva would be able to get a good skill. Kyle looked at Eva and said in a serious tone that even if the girl completely took over the dungeon, she would not reach the desired level. Then the head of the Hunter's Guild exclaimed that he would help his elder brother himself, and Eva just needed to stay out of the way. The girl began to be indignant that she was already trying her best not to argue with the guy, to which Kyle replied that Eva was trying badly. The main character could not stand it and began to separate the couple, telling them to stop behaving so terribly. Mark began to shout at his brother and Eve that if they were going to fight each other, they could get out of the dungeon. Then the main character added that the couple should focus on hunting monsters. Eva and Kyle froze when Mark threatened that he would ignore the couple if they didn't stop fighting. The young girl smiled stiffly and held out her hand and suggested that the head of the Hunter's Guild get along. Kyle forced a smile too and feigned to tell Eva that he would be more friendly to her. The young people shook hands and the main character exhaled deeply, telling Liam that they would one day become friends. Suddenly the Ice Witch, along with the Hunter Guild Master, turned around when they noticed the monster's movement behind Mark. Eve was the first to rush at the creature with the words that she would definitely bring meat for Mark. Kyle rushed after the girl, saying that he would be the only one who would help his older brother. The main character realized that a future in which these two become friends is simply impossible. In a completely different place, someone loudly exclaimed that the one they had been looking for for so long had finally entered the dungeon. The unknown man began to find out with all his might the exact location of the guy and which dungeon he went to. The stranger asked to hurry up with the search because they can intervene only when the guy's in the dungeon. Noticing the image of Mark on the monitor of the huge screen, the girl happily said that they had been waiting for the guy for a long time. Looking at the boars flying in the sky, Eva joyfully exclaimed that she would turn the monsters into ice for her uncle. At the same moment, Kyle got rid of the creatures saying that the girl should burn her skin to make it easier to pierce her with a spear. The main character silently watched as his brother and the Ice Witch threw, threw half-dead monsters into a pile, especially for him. Picking up the gem, Mark said that he would guard the stone from the corpses of monsters. After finishing off one of the monsters, Liam asked the guy if he thought he could get a good skill. The main character calmed the guy down, because he knew that as soon as Liam raised the 10th level, he would gain the skill of production. Mark looked at the other conditions for obtaining the skill and froze when he saw an incomprehensible word, after which there were 10,000 weapons. Liam was delighted when he noticed that after killing the monster, he was able to gain experience. The main character could not understand that there was a typo in the system and that the descriptions were really entered manually. Liam immediately drooped when, after reaching the 10th level, he was unable to gain absolutely any skills. Mark knew that even in the future, people would never learn anything about the system, calling it a miracle of the gods. After a while, when Eva and Kyle dealt with almost all the creatures, Mark noticed another typo in the system. Liam noticed the guy's frown, however. Mark explained that it was okay. Just his status window scared him a little. The main character froze when he noticed the inscription with an apology and could not understand why the system asked for forgiveness in front of him. Suddenly, Kyle ran up to Mark, with whom he covered his brother and Eva, who protected the guy from fire with an ice shield. The main character, confused, asked his older brother and the Ice Witch what had happened now. In a serious tone, the young girl clearly replied to Kyle's older brother that this was a boss attack. The head of the Hunter's Guild said that the original boss was a huge mountain goat. The young man then added that suddenly a huge bird appeared and ate the monster. Kyle reported that the gate had not opened because the bird was now recognized as the new boss. The entire squad of hunters understood that in order to get out of the dungeon, they had to defeat a huge bird. Kyle asked his brother to take the rare stone because he had no idea how strong the creature could be. The main character could not believe that the past could repeat itself again and the younger brother would sacrifice himself again. In a serious tone, Mark said that he was refusing the stone, causing the head of the hunters guild to be surprised. 
The protagonist told his brother that the bird has a frail skull compared to its hard back, as well as a second pair of wings. The head of the hunter's guild looked at his elder brother in surprise and asked in confusion how the guy knew this. Mark promised his younger brother that they would talk about it later when they dealt with the bird. The main character frowned at the sky, firmly deciding to himself that he would not allow this to happen twice. Mark asked Eva to use her icy breath to create a barrier for them. The Ice Witch immediately agreed, so she immediately activated one of her abilities. Then the main character turned to his younger brother with words to deal with the bird. The head of the Hunter's Guild looked at the Ice Witch and said in a serious tone that he was leaving his brother to her. Just as seriously, the young girl replied to Kyle that he no longer had to worry. Ava wanted to go instead of Kyle, but the main character dissuaded her, saying that the girl would simply burn to ashes. Mark added that although his younger brother does not have the skill of flying, he does have something similar. The hunter guild leader was able to dodge the devastating attack of the huge bird at the last second. Kyle was glad that the bird was finally on the ground because he could easily deal with it that way. Without wasting a second, the hunter guild leader ran up to the monster and took out his sword and swung. Then with a powerful jerk, the young guy chopped off the wings of the huge bird so that it could no longer fly. The main character desperately shouted that why did the younger brother hit the wings if he said to hit on the head? Kyle remembered Mark's words too late that the bird had a second pair of wings that it could use. Spreading new wings, the bird rapidly began to rise into the sky to attack from the air. The huge monster released flames from its beak. However, Kyle had the ability to resist flames and was able to survive. The main character could not understand why his brother was standing still because Kyle could just jump and easily reach his head. Mark couldn't believe that his brother hadn't yet acquired the blue leaf skill, which was meant to be used instead of the flying skill. Suddenly, Kyle froze in horror when he realized that a huge bird was heading towards his team. The Ice Witch horrified the protagonist to inform him that the monster was now flying straight towards them. The head of the Hunter's Guild used his ability to fall willow leaves and aim them at the bird's face. The main character looked at his brother in confusion, not understanding why he was just waving his hands. So Mark shouted loudly to his younger brother to step on the blue leaves and start running. The head of the Hunter's Guild decided to trust his elder brother and carefully stepped on the leaves. As soon as Mark's younger brother realized that he could finally fly, the guy was very happy. At the same moment, the Hunter Guild leader began to run through the air towards his team, trying to overtake the bird as quickly as possible. The huge creature tried to stop the guy, but Kyle was not afraid of the bird's flames, so he took out his sword again. As soon as the guy hit the bird in the head, there was a huge explosion and the shock wave almost swept away the team of hunters. Then the young people noticed how a huge bird fell with a crash with its head down. The hunter guild leader carefully descended to the ground and immediately headed towards his elder brother. Grabbing Mark by the shoulders, Kyle enthusiastically asked how his brother came up with the idea of using willow leaves for flight. The main character was surprised that his brother reacts to this as if he received a gift for Christmas. As soon as a group of young hunters came out of the dungeon, Eva and Kyle were immediately surrounded from all sides. The main character decided that he would stay away, but noticed that Bernard was rushing towards him at full speed. The man fell at Mark's feet and said loudly that he had to go with the guy so that he would not get hurt. Bernard told the guy to sit on his back because most likely Mark was very tired. Liam stood to the side and watched the scene, sadly realizing that there was nothing he could do for Mark. In the late afternoon, the main character, as promised, came to visit Kyle for a drink, but realized that his brother was in the shower. Deciding not to waste time, Mark went into the garden to greet the red-haired animal. The world was so happy to see its master that it jumped on Mark's stomach with all its strength. Then the baby beast began to spin the main character in a circle with the help of the guy's belt. As soon as the guy fed the animal, Mark tiredly lay down on the ground, hoping that this effect should be enough to tame it. With a smile on his face, the main character quietly said that he thought that he would definitely die in the dungeon today. Mark believed that a lot of strange things had happened today, from typos in the system to a high-ranking monster. Suddenly, the protagonist was blown up and began to think that all the changes could have happened due to the fact that he went back to the past. Mark indignantly began to say that the system was too aggressive and he needed to explain everything properly right away. By clicking on one of the abilities in the status window, the guy said that his skills, as well as the code word, were also very strange. Suddenly, a strange book appeared in front of the main character, making the guy very surprised. Mark heard an unfamiliar voice that said that he was short on time, but he had to explain everything in more detail. 
The voice said that they made the book intuitive and then gave it a form familiar to the human world. The main character, kneeling, was dumbfounded by the strange book that was lying on the ground. Mark turned his attention to a page on which animals were drawn and the number 50 was marked. Kyle walked into the garden and apologized to his older brother for taking so long to wash and not hear Mark come in. The protagonist suddenly realized that the system wanted him to tame 50th ranked beasts. A few days later, Mark began recording on camera the days of taming a fiery horned lion, a subspecies of unicorn. The main character noticed that on the second day of training, the size of the animal's characteristics doubled. Mir jumped into Mark's arms, but again, without holding back his strength, he hit the guy right in the stomach. However, this time the main character was not in pain because the guy rented equipment with protection and endurance. Last night, Mark lied to his younger brother that he had gained the tamer skill after level 10. The protagonist explained that the skill allows him to tame beasts of different levels up to strength. As soon as Kyle heard that Mark had an s rank skill, he immediately wanted to lock the guy in his house again. The main character began to explain to his brother that instead of hiding the skill, it is better to find a practical use for it. Mark added that he could raise a mount for Kyle from this tomboy and many others like him. The main character argued that the exploration of dungeons would become much easier. Mark was glad that this world had already fallen under the influence of his unusual skill. The guy was convinced that it would be much easier for him to train animals than to brainwash people. However, after a few days of training the little animal, all Mark's enthusiasm was gone. The main character did not know that he would have to spend so much effort and the animal would not even get tired. However, the number of hunters with mounts will increase the speed of clearing dungeons and reduce their breakthrough. The main character realized that his conscience does not allow him to just lie down and rest. Mason came into the room and clapped his hands and praised Mark for training as soon as the practice was over. The main character said in confusion that Kyle allowed him to use this room. Mason calmed the guy, saying that he was not going to kick him out, and added that he admired Mark for his training of the animal. The man apologized to the guy for being rude and disrespectful to him. Mason on his knees began to ask Mark to join the abyss, but the guy immediately refused. The protagonist remembered that every time he went into the abyss in the past, he ended in frustration at Mason's remarks. The man began to say that the guild would provide the guy with all the necessary gear, food, and equipment. It dawned on Mark that Mason didn't remember anything from the shit he had gotten himself into before. The main character realized that he was now in charge, so he made an angry expression on his face and said that he did not need anything. Spreading his arms to the sides, the main character told Mason that his younger brother would cover all the expenses himself. Mark agreed to sign the contract as a regular guild employee, intending to remain an independent hunter. The main character told the man that then he would be able to raise the beast for other guilds and earn a lot of money. Holding the animal in his arms, Mark added that he understands the value of his skill and that it will help clear the dungeons. The main character asked Mason if a man really wanted to appropriate such a skill only for himself. Mark added that many are ready for violence if they do not share something, and the guy is definitely not going to die. In the end, the protagonist said that the best solution would be to have independence from other guilds. Mark promised to raise a beast for the guild members and asked Mason to contact the other guilds. After listening to the guy, the man smiled kindly and said that Mark was too much for him. Mason asked Mark to take his training video to show to the other guilds for negotiation. The man asked the guy if he would sign a contract with the guild if it became the strongest, and the other did not threaten Mark. Then the main character asked Mason a question in response that what kind of man would hire him. Mark added that he would help the guild with his skill in any case, because he had nothing else. As soon as Mason left the room, the man grinned and said to himself that Mark clearly had self-esteem problems. The men were well aware that the boss's older brother never ceased to surprise him with each new meeting. Mason knew that usually the owners of unique skills pretend to be who knows what because skills intoxicate their minds. However, Mark was radically different, soberly assessing the prospects and reduced everything to profitable negotiations for himself. Mason knew that there had already been speculation about the pressure of other guilds on the abyss, but their guild was willing to take the risk. The man was well aware that Mark's desire for independence changed a lot, and it was he who would now attract attention. Mason could not understand whether the guy really did not understand his weight or whether he was just protecting his younger brother. In any case, the man understood that the eyes of the largest three world guilds would be riveted on the brothers. Almost immediately, Mason sent a video of Mark's training to all major guilds. One of the heads, after watching the video, decided that he needed to free up time to visit the abyss. 
Mason was sure that soon the boss's older brother would find out how valuable a hunter he was. The next day, the main character finished building a house for his red-haired pet in the dormitory. The world immediately began to explore the new place, and Mark said that now they would be able to live next door to each other. Eva and Liam entered the main character's room and began to enthusiastically examine the animal. While the girl was admiring Mark's pet, Kyle entered the room and called out to his older brother. The main character looked at his brother in surprise when he asked to give him some time. Mark was speechless when his younger brother told him that other masters of the major guilds wanted to see him. Kyle went to the meeting with his brother, arguing that it would be difficult for an F-rank hunter to talk to the S-class. The head of the hunter's guild wanted to tell the other heads to come back, but Mark stopped his brother. The main character began to explain to Kyle that his brother should think about how his actions would affect the reputation of the guild. As soon as Mark entered the meeting room, he was surprised that so many people had come to meet him. The protagonist felt that the ability to resist fear was activated while Kyle introduced the guy to the hunters. A man approached Mark and asked for the guy's hand in order to assess his abilities before the meeting. The main character pulled out his hand with the words that you can't just grab another man by the hand. It dawned on Mark that because of the skill assessor, everyone present could find out about his skill as a teacher. The man did not calm down in any way, and then the animal got angry and attacked the man, saving his owner in the process. The president of the Hunters Association said that the monster had noticed that the skill was being applied to its owner. A woman came up to Mark and said with a smile that she did not think that other proof of the guy's skills was needed. The protagonist knew that this woman was a master of the destroyer guild named Christine. The woman smiled sweetly and, saying that they could not keep such a guest waiting, asked the guy to sit down. Christina looked at the beast and assumed that the fire lion was at the level of an S-rank dungeon boss. The woman looked at Kyle and told the man that they could give the animal to them while he was still a child. The younger brother smiled and said that he was ready to exchange the cub in exchange for an S-class monster animal with ice resistance. Christina smirked and said that she understood that Kyle's guild wanted a beast that Eve could use. One of the men reported that the Abyss Guild that Kyle led had disposed of all the cubs in the market. Mark knew that the Liberator's Guild master named Michael Siokwan had said those words. The man began to resent the fact that his guild had to follow the dictates of the Abyss in order to get a mountable monster. Michael revealed that he knew that Mark was the older brother of the guild leader and was just undercover. In a calm tone, the main character said that he was united with the Abyss only by mutually beneficial cooperation. Mark added that he needed the guild's help because he couldn't handle everything on his own. Michael fell silent when the protagonist said that. If I wanted to take my brother's side, I would raise monsters only for him. The main character added that the number of animals that he can keep at the same time is limited. Getting up from his chair, Mark concluded that Michael just wanted to get mounts before the other guilds. The main character smiled broadly and said that it was a great honor for him to see all the guild masters here. Michael was clearly dissatisfied. And then Mark realized that the man was not really what he imagined. Christina approached the main character and said that the guy not only has good skills, but is also quite eloquent. The woman grabbed Mark by the chin and in a languid voice asked the guy to join her guild. The main character laughed nervously and reminded Christina that he was not going to sell himself to anyone. To change the subject, Mark confused told the woman that he expected his younger brother to be the best in the country. The Jupiter Guild master named Edgar turned to the guy and asked if his guild, as the best, could hire him right now. The main character knew that not only the Jupiter Guild was the strongest in the country, but also its master. Mark could not understand why Edgar began to talk when the atmosphere in the room was already heavy. The main character replied in confusion that this applies only to his younger brother, while others should be the best in the world. Christina began to laugh, slapping her palm on the guy's back, saying that she realized that Mark would not join anyone. The protagonist knew that if he had no resistance to fear, he would have died from it long ago. Mark was well aware that S-class hunters were constantly on the verge of death. However, the guy did not understand how the heads cope with such pressure while keeping each other in line. The protagonist suggested that these hunters must be bullying Kyle because he is younger than them. Another man turned to Mark and said that he now understood the reason why the newcomer had created his own guild. The main character with a cute smile on his face told the man that he was talking as if there was something wrong with his brother. Mark said in a confident tone that Kyle was actually much more disciplined than he was. The main character was confused when he realized that after his words, the office fell into silence and everyone was staring at him. For Mark, the younger brother was always very kind and well-mannered, 
which was still to be sought. Even as a very young child, Kyle always took care of his older brother. Mark added that when his parents died, he had to work a lot. But Kyle not only did not deteriorate, but also became even kinder. The guild leaders tried to listen carefully to the guy, but they could not stand it anymore and began to laugh loudly. Edgar, holding back his laughter, said quietly that he now understood why Kyle was so humble today. Christine, pointing her finger at Kyle, said that she realized that this bastard was just pretending to be good in front of her brother. Mark indignantly said that the guild leaders had no right to bully his younger brother if he was younger than them. The main character did not understand why everyone present in the room had such a reaction to his younger brother. Christina handed Mark the contract and said that before the guy came, the hunters had already looked at the agreement. The main character was very surprised when he noticed a clause in the agreement about the building in his ownership. The hunters explained that according to Mason, the guy will need a place where Mark can raise monsters. Kyle read out the main points of the agreement and said that the younger brother only needed to put the final signature. The main character began to try in every possible way to hide his satisfied smile from everyone present. Mark imagined how soon he would have his own building, and even with the protection of the most powerful guilds. The main character decided that he would bring Liam to the new building in order to properly deal with his equipment. And then, at the age of 25, Mark will be called a master and will try in every possible way to get an interview. Christina waved to the protagonist, saying that it was time for the guild leaders to leave for their homes. Edgar turned to the guy with the words that he still had to remember the special conditions. Kyle walked over to his brother and asked the guy not to pay attention to what the guild leaders were saying about him. Mark was glad that the negotiations ended successfully, and even with favorable conditions for him. As soon as the main character returned home, the guy was immediately greeted by a delicious dinner that Liam had prepared. After tasting one of the dishes, Mark came to the conclusion that it was very tasty and thanked the guy. Liam froze when the main character informed him that it was time for the guy to get ready to pack his things. Mark was very surprised when Liam suddenly collapsed to the floor with tears in his eyes and saying that he knew he would be kicked out. Crying bitterly, the guy said that he perfectly understood that he was an F rank, which was of no use next to him. Mark knelt beside Liam as he said that he had not been able to obtain a single level 10 skill. Smiling softly, Liam informed Mark that he would start packing soon. The main character was stunned by the fact that the guy completely misunderstood him. Liam stood up and Mark, grabbing the guy by the t-shirt, said in confusion that the young hunter had nowhere to go. Liam called himself useless, but the main character knew that everything would change once he sharpened 10,000 blades. Taking a deep breath, Mark turned to the guy with the words that he would not be able to hold him by force. Then with feigned pity, the main character told Liam that he had learned information today that would definitely help the guy. And then Mark said that although the information was valuable, he would not talk if Liam was not interested in it. The main character knew perfectly well that the guy would definitely be interested, and he was right. Mark turned to Liam and asked if the guy wanted to hear some interesting information before he left. The main character said that he heard from Camila that there are trainings that allow you to awaken abilities. Mrs. White sat in her office at her computer, sorting through the cases that she had accumulated lately. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a black shadow appeared that began to laugh loudly. Taking a kitchen knife out of the bag, the main character asked Liam not to tell anyone about this training. Mark explained to the guy that he needed to try to sharpen these knives with his additional skill. The protagonist smiled broadly when he noticed that Liam's meter moved as soon as he sharpened one knife. Mark told the guy that if you sharpen a lot of knives, you can get a very good skill for equipment. The main character admitted in a whisper that Liam only needs to sharpen 10,000 knives. The guy smiled broadly and said that he would sharpen a hundred knives a day, and then he would be able to do it in a hundred days. Camila was very happy when the main character unexpectedly came to visit her. The woman immediately began to praise the guy for a wide range of knowledge about dungeons and offered to create a research group. Camila said that she was interested in the fact that dungeons are always very unpredictable. The main character told the woman that he had only some guesses, but he did not have enough material about the dungeons. Camila, blushing a little, said that their country was very small, so they had so little knowledge. Mark looked at the woman carefully when she said that she had no choice but to join a foreign group. The main character understood that it was for this reason that Dr. White would leave for America in the future. Three years later, Camilla will discover the pattern by which dungeons arise, and then the states will be more privileged. The woman put buckwheat starch jelly on the table and told Mark that she had specially prepared it. Camilla explained that Takabe likes to sneak into the house at night for buckwheat jelly and rice wine. 
The woman said that the Tokabi is a hunter about whom neither gender nor age is known. The only thing that was known was that the Tokabi had the ability to teleport. The hunter became famous because he began to save people from various incidents and natural disasters. The elusiveness of the Takabi is a great threat, so they try to catch it in every possible way. Camilla smiled happily and said that she believed that a Takabi could be well-versed in all kinds of dungeons. The main character looked at the woman in disbelief when the teacher White said that she had found a way to summon a hunter on the internet. Mark was confused and suggested that Camilla ask for help from the petrol, rather than wait for a strange hunter. Suddenly, the light went out in the room and the main character took a flashlight out of his pocket to illuminate the space around. The main character looked at Camilla and noticed the confused look of a young woman who was looking behind him. Mark looked at his teacher in bewilderment as Camilla covered her mouth with her hand in horror. The woman looked at the terrible creature that stood behind the main character. As soon as Camilla began to scream loudly, Mark turned around in horror and finally noticed the creature. The main character picked up his teacher as soon as he noticed that Camilla was losing consciousness from horror. Suddenly, Mark felt his ability to resist terror activate. The main character came to the conclusion that these are the tricks of the Tokebi, because in the modern world there can be no ghosts. At the same moment, a strange hunter appeared in front of Mark, who asked the guy not to be too angry. Tokebi said that he came here because a young woman desperately wanted to see him. The strange hunter added that he did not calculate that the scientist would faint because of him. Suddenly, a status window appeared in front of Mark, which informed him that the Tokebi was in an incomplete state of influence. The main character realized that a hunter was now standing in front of him who could move anywhere and did not belong to anyone. Mark realized that if he could get Takabi's help, then Camilla would not need to leave for America. The main character grinned slyly and looking into the hunter's eyes said that such jokes did not scare him at all. Takabi, confused, said that he saw the guy shaking with fear, to which Mark replied that he was just caught off guard. The main character got up from the floor and asked the hunter if he really thought that he could scare Mark with stupid jokes. Mark was well aware that the Takabi loves to joke and his whole life is devoted to teasing others. The main character looked at the hunter and offered the Takabi a bet on whether he could scare him. Kemala woke up in the morning and immediately jumped out of bed as soon as she remembered the events of the previous night. On the side of her bed, the woman found Mark who was looking at her attentively. The main character feigned that the Takabi left and added that his sense of style is so-so. In a slightly sad tone, Camilla said that she was sorry that the unusual hunter had left because she wanted to learn a lot from him. As soon as Mark announced that he could help the young woman, Camilla was immediately inspired. The main character said that soon he will have one way to get the necessary information for research. That evening, Mark put forward the Tokabi's condition that if the guy was frightened, he would become a servant of the hunter and vice versa. Tuckabee began to laugh loudly at the fact that some pathetic F-rank hunter wanted to make him his servant. In an indifferent tone, Mark said that if the hunter did not mind, then he would write so in the contract. Tuckabee approached the guy and said that this was very suspicious because Mark would definitely lose. The protagonist has made sure that the hunter does not know about his skills and that he has resistance to terror. Mark knew that as soon as the Takebi agreed to the bet, the main character would automatically win. With feigned embarrassment, Mark told the hunter that the Takebi was just very cool, so he wanted to argue with him. The main character added that the way the Takebi talked about the knapsack with secrets also sounded incredible. Scratching his head, Mark said that he would definitely not remain at a loss, and if he also won, then it would be a success. The unusual hunter smiled contentedly when the guy said that even if he lost, he would become a servant of the Tokebi himself. The hunter began to laugh loudly, saying that the guy was very funny and cunning since he decided to take the Takebi on the weak. The main character warned the hunter that he was sure of his victory in advance, to which the Tokebi laughed even more. According to the terms of the contract, the Tokebi must come to Mark three times within a week, and if the guy gets scared at least once, the hunter will make him his first-class servant. The main character told Camilla that he could not tell the woman exactly how he would get the data. Mark added that he cannot conduct research by sitting at the table for a long time, so he will tell everything to the woman. Camilla looked at the guy in surprise when he said that if the woman succeeded, then they would share the income. Teacher White said in confusion that she could not guarantee any results from her research. In a serious tone, Mark informed Camilla that there was a seacoast and slugs in the newly discovered dungeon. The young woman looked at the guy in surprise not understanding how Mark could have predicted this. The main character stood up from his seat 
asking Camilla to think about his proposal. The woman froze when Mark said that it would be good for Camilla's uncle to put the rights to the dungeon up for auction. As soon as the main character left the room, the guy immediately leaned against the door, hoping that there would be no problems. Now Mark only had a week to frolic with the Takabi, and the information would be in his pocket. For the first time, the hunter appeared in front of the main character a few days later in the form of a mad baker. However, the protagonist was not impressed in any way, which meant that the first attempt at Takibi was a failure. The next day, Mark brought Liam a whole box of blunt knives that he had found at a flea market. Suddenly, the protagonist fell to the floor because his leg was grabbed by a Takabi in the form of a drowned girl. Then Mark scolded the hunter for agreeing that the Takabi would scare and not try to kill the guy. One rainy day, the main character, waking up at night, decided to drink water from the refrigerator. As soon as Mark opened the door, he noticed a bloody voodoo doll that was looking directly at the guy. The main character indifferently asked if the hunter had used heavy artillery. Mark said that he would not fall for it, but as soon as he began to turn his head, he froze. A creepy creature looked into the eyes of the main character, and Mark said in confusion that the Takabi really had a second attack. The guy realized that this time he was a little scared, but the fear managed to be canceled in time. Suddenly, the main character heard a quiet murmur behind his back and slowly turned to the noise. Liam stood there with a knife in his hands, and when he heard someone's presence, he slowly turned his head. The Tokebi was very frightened by the sight he saw, and quickly recoiled to the side of Mark. Liam explained to the main character that he could not sleep, so he decided to sharpen his knives a little more. Suddenly, the guy noticed a Takabi in the corner on the ceiling, but thought it was a ghost and began to scream loudly. Liam lost consciousness, and the third Takabi attempt failed, meaning that Mark had won.